been here for six months. Thank you so much. Hello, Barco. How are you doing today? I don't know why I'm talking like this. It's late in the evening, <laughs> but we're going to be doing a little bit of a mini session. This mini sold will cover Monday at Marlins, but on a Thursday. I'm quite aware of what we did there, but it is on a Thursday. Say hi, old darling. This is. Subdue. <laughs> I'm never going to call you Krabuga unless you uh, come in right. <laughs> Give a proper bloody intro, Krabuga. Uh. Hello, sir. Uh, welcome to our meeting. Um, please what the fuck is this? Your... Is freaking cyberware? <laughs> so the Starks last quarter, we're really diving, but, you know, we think if we really goose it next season. All right, so this is going to be a ship exploration, more or less, episode. This is going to cover this episode. I'm going to get us on here. Excuse me. Uh, oh, shoot. Which one did I do it in? Was it this one? Yes. Hello. You will notice that to the right of me is this weird dead-eye-faced... Tiefly, this is uh, Stephanie's stand-in. Stephanie is still here. Uh, we just, you just don't know it. So, so, so they're gonna be over there. Point being is that today, everybody wave so I can make sure your camera's working. Honey. <laughs> Honey. Thank you. <laughs> everybody wave! <laughs> so, uh, this is going to be a, oh, this is going <laughs> to be an exploration of the ship which we got very little of last time, as well as a lot more um, interactions with Gareth and also uh, Lushane. If you forget who that is, Gareth, wave, lave. That's you, Ray. Oh, great. Sorry. That's Ray. So yeah, Ray is playing Gareth and AJ playing Lushane. <laughs> Hello. C Caroline is here, uh, who plays Micah, but Caroline is here just because they're just that cool and they're here for support and it's one really wonderful. But. Point being is in the future, I will have your names superimposed underneath your boxes so that we can have it be easily identifiable. But these, this beautiful map, as well as these beautiful images that were totally not made in Sims 4, they were. And uh, Eldor is amazing at building bathrooms, guys, you have no idea. But this was all made by Eldor and I, custom, and uh, yeah, it will serve to identify just a little bit more of what it actually looks like inside the ship. We ask that you please ignore uh, the idyllic scene outside of the... The, the the ship, if you ever see a porthole, it will look out into idyllic high press. Could you just put display panels? It, yeah, they could. Oh, they could be uh, like screens, darling. You know? Actually, mm -hmm. I really like that. I was, that's that's a, a brilliant idea. Oh, damn, upgrade. Very much so. So, yeah, we, uh, we took a lot more pictures. This is the rec room. All it needs is a foosball table, and it could be on a set of friends, which we will be doing. We will be making a foosball table, and we will be putting it in this room. I don't know if they're in Sims 4, but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. But yes, that is, that is basically what it is. Uh, Eldor wanted, uh, to DM a session where we ran through a bit more of, like, the interactions between Lucien and the rest of the crew, as well as getting to know each other, so we have a bit more connection and interaction. Uh, also, yeah, in the last one, we didn't detail this, this is very important, uh, to the left of Marlin was a gigantic burb. This burb is the pirate parrot. Uh... Is, is here, guys. Uh, yeah, I, oh, I can't, oh, I can't touch the burb anymore. Oh, that's, that's sad. I can't. Yeah, I locked the burb in, so. <laughs> can you make it bigger so burb. everyone can okay, see okay. more of the burb? It's fine. All right. I'll just, no, you don't have to. I just zoomed in. So this is the burb. This is the pirate parrot. He's a very cool guy. He's a pretty sweet one. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. I just wanted to give an overview. Darling, if you want to. There, there you go. That's a big barb. That's a big barb. You can shrink the barb now. <laughs> he's very, he's very cool. He's very cool. Shrink, Majestic. Shrink, 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 shrink barb. He's taking up Push, literally I seventy thought... percent of my screen. <laughs> he's a big bird. That's a big barb. Okay, we're just gonna shrink down. There we go. But anyway, the point being is that yes, uh, this is the whole of the ship. It's very cool. We're gonna explore it. And ask some character interactions with the NPCs on board of it. Uh, darling, do you want to do a recap? It's very, very small, of course, but do you want to do a recap of what happened last time? I do not do recaps, so one of you guys will do the recap. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, who wants to start? AJ, do you want to begin? I'll piggyback off of Ah, trying to remember, trying to remember, trying to remember. Okay, so last time we began at a dock, uh, or rather on the ocean, um where this particular boat that you see now, or this ship, 
um, was taking off from a place called Zelos Bay, which is this... Do we have a map uh, scene, darling? <laughs> uh, the world map? Yes. Uh, yes, we do. Thank you. Also, uh, we're on the sea, so that's why you guys might hear seagulls in the background. Yeah, uh, I'm trying something new with two Ooh, music bots. Ooh, so. you're using... Oh, that's very clever. Oh, I might do that. That's very cool. I'm, I'm going to start doing that. You're using two uh, for the ambience. That's awesome. Anyway. Oh, nice. So this yeah. is the uh, world map. Oh, I love how Harvey Killian is still in the center. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we took off from here in Zealous Bay. Where would you say, darling? Uh, where would you say we took off in Zealous Bay? Would you like be around here or towards the point? No. So what happened was that you went from... You went from here all the way to remember you I left. Can't, I can't in see glitch. where here is. I can't see your little point. No, you. You guys left around here. Oh, glitch. we were in glitch. I apologize. We did not leave from Zealous Bay. Forgive me. We left around a port in the glitch district and then made our way over here. Yeah? Yes. Cool. So. Glitch District, which is mostly known for being uh, quite a shite hole. Uh, Nightshade Town, along with the Glitch District, embody this sort of continent, which is very poor uh, and very downtrodden. And then we went, uh, or rather, um, AJ's character, whose name is Lu Shane, who is a newer member of the Resistance, which is trying to oppose the uh, Cyberware Overlords, who operate out from this island here, which is called Cloud Nine, which does float, actually. It is a floating city. Think Alicia Battle Angel a little, little bit. Um, the Resistance is attempting to oppose them, trying to overthrow them, make things better, because they are kind of subjugating everybody. Um, and the main way of doing that is they have something called a rush battery, which everybody has to use for any sort of energy-based needs, which is a lot in a cyberpunk uh, world. Magic is practically banned in every respect. Uh, anyone seen practicing it is arrested almost immediately. Um, the Glitch District is a bit of a rundown town. Um, we picked up uh, Gareth, or yeah, Gareth Senek, which is race character um, mm -hmm. in the Glitch District, and we left from there, heading towards a spot a little bit of ways and underneath uh, Cloud Nine, right here, because it was where Micah, Wave, Wave, Micah, it was where Micah, which is played, who's played by Caroline, uh, got stranded after a mission to Cloud Nine. That is the basics. Um, a bit of background is that Marlon previously met. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Lushain, which is AJ's character, or Spence's character, uh, in the Resistance headquarters of Aurora, which is located underneath uh, Emerald City, over here. They then, uh, through some magical means, which we'll probably describe more in depth later, uh, they teleported... Darling, could you turn your camera slightly up? Thank you very much. They then traveled... Oh, is the little man pointing towards you? Mm -hmm. Darling? No. Your entire no, screen is yellow. There we go. Oh, I see. It was from behind you. So anyway, yeah. the um, the ship, uh, along with uh, Marlin and uh, Lucien, teleported over to a secretive place in Glitch, and which is where they met up with Garrick Sanic. And now we're going to open on the journey that um, the three of them, along with the crew that's on the ship, uh, which is Marlin's crew, uh, that we're going to basically have a mini-sode about that particular session um that we kind of passed over it because we wanted to finish in time as well as we wanted to get to micah and um uh, an ease point e oh, e being the uh character art that's right next to me to my right marlon will forever be the summarizer i am relegated to this role uh i don't mind <laughs> as much so after being on the water for about maybe two or three hours marlon had just recently concluded an interview with both Lucien and gareth uh, they're both new members of the Resistance. They're both agents. Um, Lucien and Gareth have also both had, as far as the interview proved, um, some connection with Cyberware, uh, which, you know, they elaborated on a little bit. They told about. Uh, so it was all very transparent. Uh, after getting a lay of them, um, Marlon began taking them on a tour, quotations, and that's where we're mostly going to open. Did I miss anything, darling? No, you have not. Uh, that was perfect. Fantastic. Um, cool. Do you want to open? Yes. Cool. So, is everyone 
Does any, everyone have their character sheet open as well as Albert? Yes. Yep. Awesome. Bug, bugle boy? Oh, bugle boy. I like that. Bugle boy, yeah. Boogie we'll boogie we'll bugle boy. <laughs> um, but anyway. So, it was a tense interview between the three of you, which was understandable since. The two of you, Gareth and Zen, um, Gareth and Zenic, Gareth and Lu Shang, you guys are new and currently, you know, reporting to your uh, operator. But it has come to a pass. And as Marlon leads you outside of his quarter, through the hallway, into the rec room, recreation room. You slowly begin to feel the ship rock as the wave probably crash against um, against the ship. And since the two of you both rode incredibly poor um, pretty quickly, as you walk through the sofa, close walk, to the... Walk by the sofa, not through... Uh, yeah, walk through the sofa. <laughs> as you walk by the sofa... Uh, closer to the dining room, the dining area. Um, both of you begin to feel, um, you know, dizzy and nauseous. Um, this feeling of, you know, wanting to throw up, but not quite. Since you, neither of you had that much of a breakfast or lunch stuffed in you. But, Oof. you know, originally you can smell Charlie's uh, cooking. Kind of, like traveling outside to the recreation room, but now, to the both of you, the idea of another meal is no longer appetizing and more God. pushing you to the side of does, not sorry, wanting to Does Gareth's name have two R's or one? Uh, just one. Cool, thank you. Yeah. So, Marlon, you lead them to in front of the kitchen. Stand by, and you, as you look back, you notice just how sick they're, they're feeling. And we'll go from there. <laughs> uh, you, you all right, lads? You look a bit, uh, you look a bit seasick. You probably haven't been on many boats. No, I definitely haven't. I'm more of a bland fairy man myself. Oh my god. Uh, alright, Charlie, uh, well, these are the two new ones, uh, and he just started gestures at the two men behind him. Um, and as he does so, you see a man in his early 50s, um, with brown, short, curly hair, kind of mess messy, uh, walking up to you. You notice that his left arm, uh, half of his left arm, the lower half, including his hand, is um, prosthetic. Prosthetic, yes. Um, and walking toward you, his t his arm's tool was meat cleaver, but, you know, as he noticed, you guys, he quickly shipped them back to, like, normal hand once. Gives you guys a wave, and then nod to you, Marlon, as you continue to, as you continue to speak. Um, he wa yeah, Marlon would look back, he's gonna look back over at, like, Gareth and Lushane, just be like, Alright, Gareth, Lushane, this is Charlie, he's the, uh, he's both cook and also, you know, part-time, a bit, bit of everything, um, mainly he, uh, you know, he helps out with preparing meals in the kitchen as well as sometimes catching the occasional fish, which is usually delicious, but I think, uh, Charlie, I think these, uh, these boys are gonna need a lie down. Um, but you'll you get a chance to uh, to chat with old Charlie later. Um, he's, he's a pretty nice guy. He's, he's a good good person to talk things over if you need. And we're probably we're gonna need to take them. But yeah, this is this is this is Charlie. This is Gareth. This is Lushane. So you know he just sort of does the introduction. Wave at both of them to like <laughs> if Gareth and Lushane can talk. <laughs> I'm fun. Oh. Oh, so and, good. Pleasure to be here. It's okay. It's okay, lads. And as he says, he waves. His name's Charlie. 
I will send some tea over, mm. if that would be helpful. <laughs> he looks at yeah. you guys, but like kind of expecting you guys to not answer, so like kind of looks yeah, back. Yeah, no, he's sort and... of. Hmm? <laughs> I'm I'm sweating in the face and just. <laughs> not... I think we'll take. I think we'll take three. Uh, thanks, Charlie. I'm ill. Looking forward to tonight's dinner. We're going to, you know, we're going to go. We're going to, we're going to go. And he'll, like, oh. half... Be sure to pay Z91S a visit if they need to. Hmm, that's a very good idea. Uh, yeah, and then he, like, he'll lead, carry whoever needs to be carried back out. So the three of you stumble back, almost. I would say at this point, Marlon's supporting, um, supporting the two of you. Doing the arm <laughs> earlier, <carry> thing. <laughs> exactly. Earlier, as you guys walk past through the hallway, you or Marlon already pointed to where you guys will be living on the ship, um, which is unfortunately the furthest two rooms from, from the, the bathrooms. Actually, yeah. Um, that's the thing as well. Would we, uh, actually, no, uh, give me just one second. I'm trying to think if he would have put them in, uh, the two, two rooms on one side, or if he would put one in here and then one across, probably one across from each other. All right. Would, would that make sense to you? No. That yeah. would make sense. Okay. So yeah, as you, yeah, as, as, as we passed in the hallway, he'll like point over and he'll just be like, all right, so Gareth, this is yours. Uh, so Gareth, you like push open a door, and as you can look above, it's a pretty bland room <laughs> with a small, like can, one could be only described as this camping sort of bed. Um, it's like an army bed, yeah. Yeah, um, cool. and around the corner there's a small chest, and then to the other side there is a tiny gray dresser where you can unpack your things. And yes, you do have something to unpack, but right now you kind of just want to sit down. Yeah, you can dump your stuff in here for now, and then we can go down, probably get you something from the med bay. <laughs> probably might need it. Um, yeah. I, uh... Gary, as you walk into the room, probably. I would say barely giving them a wave. As the as as Marlin carrying Lucian past you. <laughs> yeah. You, you got a chest in there. Don't throw up in it, but you do have one there for storage. Um, and then over, uh, yeah. And then Marl bring Lucian uh, to the other side and go. All right, Lucian, yours is much the same. Um, your neighbor is Argus. Uh, he's the hearty one. He's used down in the engine room, so you'll probably have a little bit of quiet. But if you do hear music coming from across from you, that will be Argus. He's uh, actually an aficionado of the guitar. He's not bad at it. He's gotten quite good. It sounds less like a dying goat every day. Um, no, he's actually quite good. But here's yours, and it's it's a carbon copy, right? Sounds pleasant. Thank you, Operator Captain Nah, it's, it's just Marlon will do for now. In front of the crew, Captain is nice, but for now, you're too sick right now. There's too many titles. Darling, you wanted to say something? No, no. Oh, this just need a, yeah, just need a lot down. Oh, a bit. Yeah. oh, absolutely. Actually, that's a good point. Maybe you shouldn't be walking up and down. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down and have a chat with Xenon when I see if I can get you some, some little meds for this. I'm sure we have some somewhere. Not everyone was as good with their <laughs> sea legs immediately. Charlie was pretty okay. Bella was, took a while. Um, but no, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. You lads rest and uh, yeah. Bathroom is down that way, to your left off of the, uh, uh, right when you get into the rec room. Um, and he'll go over and make sure Gareth is also okay. But yeah. <laughs> so Shane, you, you just take it easy, all right? I face plant onto the bed and just give him a thumbs up. Mm. <laughs> uh, this drawing is amazing. Mad props to whoever drew this. I agree, Proxy. That was Eldora. Uh, she did a very cool job on this. The reference art is Sims 4. Uh, 10 out of 10 was so, going to say the same thing. Thank you, Bob. So, I would say, you know, Lucian, you close the door, and as you do, you hear Marlin's step walking away. And right now, the ocean is quite gentle. Um, it's closer to afternoon, around 4 o'clock by now. Um, 
it's there's not a lot of huge rocking going on, which is promising for your stomach. <laughs> and same with you, Gareth. Slowing <laughs> down a little bit. It's just like, all right, well, we're going to take it back a few notches for the sake of the boys. We're going to need that. Gareth's just lying on his cot, like one arm off the bed, one leg slightly off, and he's just, oh. I hate everything right now. Welcome to the resistance. We have boats. <laughs> and I would say, you know, the two, both of you kind of really look forward to what Captain would bring from the ones Maybe some med tablets that's going to help cure this <laughs> Ale. incredible sickness. And around five to ten minutes later, uh, Charlie is going to visit you, Gareth, first. Um, you hear a gentle knock on the door. Mm, come in. At first you hear a muffled chuckle, um, but as he pushed open the door, he's not, you know, he's not mocking you. It was more of a smile of sympathy. <laughs> he gently sets down what resembles to be a kind of herbal tea. Even smelling it makes your stomach, you know, move less is the best way to describe it. <laughs> he sets it down on the dresser, um, sits beside you. He gently, using his cyborg arm, um, pat you on the back. How are you feeling, boy? Oh, I, I've not great. I felt this is. <laughs> and he's gonna. Gareth is gonna make a struggle to like sit up straight on his cot, so he can oh, no, just no reach need, over. No you can. And as he says that, he stands up, pulling the tea over, handing it to you. And as he does so, he also takes out from his apron, his baby blue apron, a little plastic bag. Oh, it's a bark bag. I'm not full. In case you need it. What a lad. First few days on the sea was rough for me as well. Well, it was decades ago, but it was rough. <laughs> thank, thank you. I appreciate it. Mm, well, just I'll leave the, you to rest. The level of acting here is amazing. <laughs> he says that, you know, gently putting down everything, kind of with this hidden, not hidden, this like explicit worry, but not just not just for you, but also for if you throw up, I'm going <laughs> to be the one that has to clean up. Kind of worry. Um, just like, you just you just rest easy, boy. You just you just rest easy. <laughs> No, was, um, yeah. Clumsily clutch the plastic bag in my one hand, and then use my other one to just start drinking the tea. <laughs> you know, he flashes you a smile, and then he leaves, closing the door as he leaves, and he's going to go to Lucien at the same time. Um, and Lucien, it's. Similar to uh, with that as well, you hear a gentle knock on the door, and then followed by, "You awake, boy?" Just a minute. <clears throat> kind of stumble to get up and slowly try to balance myself walking to the door. Oh, all right. So you do. You open the door, and outside. On the hallway, you see Charlie holding another cup, um, another cup of the tea. Mind if I come in? Be my, be my guest. And I kind of courtesy like him in and open the door. Similar, he sets the tea down on the drawer 
um, on the dresser, rather, um, pulls out another similar plastic bag, puts it beside. This is in case you need it. And bathroom is down the hallway, if you forgot. It's a bit far for you guys, I suppose, but if you can make it. I appreciate it. And then I just get the teacup and just down it. Don't care how hot it is, I'm just downing that thing. And as shots, soon shots. as... <laughs> as soon as you drink it the first sensation you feel is indeed it's very hot you feel like this burning sensation down your throat all the way down to your stomach but in a way it's good in a way it's good because it soothes out this incredible nausea that's been going on for the past hour or so and it you can't quite tell what kind of herb it is. It it smells like a splend of chamomile with something else that is more bitter than just floral tea. You have a feeling that uh, there could be some orange peels inside as well. Um, but definitely it helps you. And it, you keep in mind that next time if you feel some sort of sea, seasick, you'll definitely ask for, for this kind. But... You know, he pats you on the back as he gently sits you down and says, I'll leave it to it, boy. Um, we'll only have some soup for dinner, I think. You'll be easy on your stomach. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie. That was oof, hot, but oh, good. Good. I'll bring a cup to you again if, if you need all right, all right. So he says as he leaves, closing the door behind you. And I would say around this time, Marlon, you come upstairs again. Probably with tablets. After yeah. some light banter with Z91. Some light, yeah, uh, just some light stuff with him where, you know, I was just like, can I have some? And he's just like, well, if you say please, etc. Um... Yeah, yeah. Z91S will give you, you know, somewhat of a snarky smirk. But... Still, you know, packs enough for like quite a few days mm. for you, uh, mm. for both of them, on a small little metal containment uh, yeah. container yeah. that like sections off each day's little, amount of tablet, and tum then he would say, "Tums." Yeah, but he would say, you know, <laughs> this one is for nausea. That one is for sleep. All right, I'll give it to him. I think they could use it. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. Close the door when you leave. Please. You know, it wouldn't hurt you to say please, or the captain, or any of the above. I did say please. I didn't hear it in your tone. And, you know, so he closes the door. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. And then he, like, waves at you like this. Yeah. He waves, like, a half-hearted one. And then he goes back up. Um... <clears throat> and no, he'll he'll knock on uh, he'll knock on. Wait, who who is looking worse? Who rolled worse that game? Actually, I would love to know. One of you rolled a four. One of you rolled a five. Who rolled the four? That's a good question. Who <laughs> rolled the four? You're you're gonna <laughs> die. You're gonna die. It's been decided. Oh god! Uh, I, six, six, I rolled the four. I rolled the Great, five. Awesome. Okay. All right. Cool. So we'll head for Gareth first. All right. It seems like that will be a uh, yeah, that'll be an uh, important thing to do. Um, yeah, he'll head for Gareth first, and he'll uh, enter and go. How you doing? Yeah. Gareth is bracing himself against the on his bed a little bit with one arm, okay, and still good. just sipping at his tea. Okay, not so good. Got it. All right. Well, a little bit better. Well quite feel like throwing up anymore this is from the doctor we'll uh we'll get you these first and he hands you a uh, he hands you a couple tablets uh this one is for sleep and this one is for wait hold on this one is for sleep this one is... yes this one is for sleep this one is for nausea i'm not mixing them up um he hopefully isn't 
Uh, and he slides them. <laughs> he put, no, no, he puts them over on the side of the dresser. And it's just like, all right, so this should help someone. Um, after you're feeling a little bit better, both of you, we'll go on a little bit of a tour of the ship so you guys can know how it works, what kind of duties you might be taking here and there. Um, I'll, I also should ask, did we... Did they uh, decontaminate before they both entered the ship? We're just going to assume that they did. No, they didn't. You specifically hmm? said that they didn't. You specifically said that Glorb, you did not order Glorb. No, 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 not Glorb. Did they step into a decontamination room in the airlock before? Yes, they probably. So, yes. All right, so we're just going to assume that they both stepped in, did that whole thing, and then went out. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have not yet met Blorb, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no, they have not. They cool, have not. okay. All right, yeah. Chat's probably so confused right now. Who's Blorb? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think he made the coffee. So, um, after having given Gareth his, I got it, Gareth, sleep well, if you can, uh, and make sure to... There's a couple uh, straps underneath that bed. They're light ones, but you can put them over yourself so you don't rock around too much. That's more for turbulence more than anything else but you know it, it could help you uh, I hope that these uh, these came from the doctor so you know they uh, they hopefully should give you some respite for a while get some rest okay uh, and he'll like quite yeah he'll, no, he'll get out of the door and then uh, go over to uh, Lushane and he'll just knock I'll be like Lushane hello it's open all right, these are some pills from the doctor downstairs. Should help with your nausea. This one, this one is for sleep. Uh, try to get some rest if you can. Um, oh, I see Charlie brought you some tea. I'm gonna go and get some myself. I hope oh, you feel better. Helped quite a bit. Mm, I hope you get better in the morning. I'm sorry, I probably should have warned you of this. It is a bit jarring every so often for someone to come on board. Not only do we have oars working outside, but we also have jet propulsion in the back. So it is quite an uneven rhythm, even for our ship. So next time... Uh, you do hear you do hear Bella snorting as oh, she goes outside by. of the... She, she, she goes by she, the door. Because she, she is, yes, she is currently patrolling on yeah. the ship, mm -hmm. uh, doing a round check. And as this is happening, you do hear Bella snorting. Let's not be vindictive, Bella, even if it is a bit funny. Any resp no response. No response. No yeah. response. She'll warm up to you eventually. Um, she's just a bit of a hard nut to crack uh, at first. But it's not, yeah, it's a good sort, mostly. Most people here are. Especially Charlie's a real sweetie. The doctor downstairs, you know, when us is a particular, he's an acquired taste, but he's very good at what he does. Um, and then, uh, Argus, mm, Argus is a bit of a wild card. It's a bit, a bit difficult to see which way he swings on people. Uh, unfortunately, mostly you'll be working with Bell, so, uh, we'll have to squash that soon. But, um, no, it's just, it normally respects, um, you know, good aim. My, he, like, mimes a pistol and, you know, a, a good amount of stubbornness, so you, you might get along. But I'll take you on a tour after you're done feeling a little bit better. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, working with Bella. <laughs> yeah. And another thing as well. I'll mention it to Gareth later. In private, considering both of you are official members of the Resistance, as well as you know, relatively good people, if any of the interviews to say, in private, I would like to extend you every courtesy, because even if I am an operator and you're an agent, it's not only one rank difference, but also I'd like you in general to call me Marlin in private. Because in private, I'll extend you every courtesy. In front of the crew, I would prefer captain. Mainly just to retain some amount of order. But in private, Marlin's perfectly serviceable because, well, I don't know. It's, um, I'll call it optimism. I have maybe too much of it, but I've got a good feeling about both of you, so. We'll, we'll keep that in mind, Marlin. I'm Lushane. And I extend out my hand. Yeah, he shakes Again. it. And he grabs it firmly. It's good to have you aboard, Lucien. Uh, you know, at some point, would you be, you know, would you be uh, against having a nickname of sorts in the future? Most people on this uh, ship usually give it to each other. Is that something that you'd uh, 
How, how, how open to that would you be? I only ask this now because I can already feel myself wanting to call you Shane, and I don't know if that's something that you want, unless you prefer Lou. Lou works fine. All right. Well, maybe we'll... Yep. But I was called the, the Lone Ranger back when I was still... You are not. You were not. That's not an actual thing. That was your nickname? No way. I'm yeah, so, so. I would spend my lonesome time just studying. He has a southern accent now, and I fucking love it. We need to acknowledge how glorious this is that Lucian <laughs> has a southern... Does, did anyone else notice? I'm sorry, breaking character, but did anyone I'm else... Out of character, I'm glad, because that's what I was trying to go for with this, with this In the voice. beginning, okay, perfect. so he does have no, a slight southern perfect. accent. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing, it's perfect. This is like the Three Musketeers, darling. Bioku said this is like the Three Musketeers. Remember when we re we named a group chat the Three Musketeers for this? Anyway, yes, point being is that when yeah when he says that he'll lean down and he'll just be like, "That is a cool fucking nickname. I love the Lone Ranger. That's that's so. Wait a minute. That's like oh, I'm not good with uh human. I mean Kylo's history. Um, I don't know human history. Uh, in terms of uh, history, that's like a that's a reference to some. That's like the old days back in like uh, like a hundred years ago or something or something like that. It was like something to do with like cattle or something, wasn't it? Uh, sheriff, I believe. Mm. I was like a peacekeeping force. Oh, that's such a cool <laughs> nickname. All right, well, we'll see if we can get that trending, if we can get that going. But no, it's, it's, it's good to meet you. You both are very, no, you seem like good people. I love that nickname. That's amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> Out of character, I'm also loving this, so it's perfect. All right, sleep well. I'm gonna go over and uh, and make sure Gareth is uh, is sleeping too. Oh, the lights, the lights are here, and he points to the side of the door, which there's like a small little panel. It's like a touch thing that you can touch, and then it boom goes down. And uh, oh, is it yeah. like a slider thing where if you touch if lower, you, it kind of yeah, gradients down? If you swipe down, the light just goes. Oh, and that's cool. Yeah, and it sinks in uh, on the side of the window. Baku, thank you very much for the 100 bits. I really appreciate that, man. Different, oh, bro bonding. <laughs> different from bro bondage. That's a different thing. Jesus <laughs> fucking <me. laughs> I wish we could have left him with the Three Musketeers moment, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Anyway, so he's just like, this is the light switch. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you want the, um, well, you'll notice that if you do, and he'll dim the lights down uh, to the point where they're like almost off. If you do, you'll notice, and he'll point outside to the window, which is right now, yes, this is now canon. It is displaying, uh, if you allow this, darling, it is displaying like an idyllic little, it, like almost an oasis view, if that makes sense. Yeah. It'll yeah, be like, um, if you want that to be, uh, you know, just normal outside, like ocean, uh, you can simply tap, uh, and he'll tap the light thing, and you'll watch mm -hmm. as the scene changes to like ocean scent. It's just a nice default, uh, it's 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 nothing. It's nothing more. It's just camouflage uh, that's been repurposed. The reason for that, put that in uh, more recently. It's uh, well, it can be nice. You know, it can be nice to you know just be able to you know relax without thinking about exactly where you are. It can be helpful. Some oh. of the crew meditates every so often, so you know, hmm. there's things like that. But anyway, yeah, have a good sleep. That's how the lighting works. Um, oh, and uh, if you hear my voice come from one of the sides, uh, that's the intercom system. It's gonna sound very echoey, like it's coming from the inside of a cathedral church. I can't fix that, no matter how many times I've tried. I'm just stuck in permanent... Wait. He'll go outside the door, close it, and then speak <laughs> into the magnifying glass, and uh, just do the, do like the slight intercom thing just to his room. He won't do it to everything. And he'll just go, it sounds a bit like this. So oh, Christ it's, Almighty. It's, it's a bit loud, I know. So I'm working on it. Wait, hold on a minute. Okay, so we can do something more like that. That's a bit more serviceable, you know what I mean. So, opens door. That's, that will happen. So I do want to give you a heads up about that. Uh, that's just for intercom purposes or announcements. I can not see you. It's just an intercom. Having cameras in individual crew quarters would be a bit too cyberware for all of our tastes. <laughs> I don't like constant surveillance, but you have a good sleep. You have a very I lay sleep. back in bed and salute. <laughs> I salute my sleep. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, sleep is <laughs> sleep is divine. Go worship. Uh, he's gonna go over to Gareth and probably repeat the same conversation. You know, he's gonna come in and he's gonna be like, Gareth, hello. And so, Gareth is just already. He just took both pills because he was too oh, foggy headed just... to remember which ones were which. So he's the just lights are off. just on full blast and he's sprawled on his back lazily uh, or sloppily across the bed. Okay, alright. So Marlon is going to go over and he's going to put his body under the bed and he's going to cover it with the covers. <laughs> he's going to go over to the light and he's going to dim it completely. Uh, and then he's going to close the door shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's still not bro bondage. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never be you'll never be Kerbuga. it will always be crab up a captain marlin what now anyway so <laughs> marlin you um at this point it's around five ish and you know in about an hour it will 5 be dinner time 5 p.m yeah okay. wow we have uh, dinner early yeah, in about um, in about an hour, Charlie will be ready with his food. Okay. Um, as you as you just as you got out, you see Bella like opening the doors, going upstairs back to the cockpit. Um, as I come out of uh, Zenix room. Yeah, Good. she she does she did wave and salute at you before she almost as in. Nice to see you again, Captain. Now I'm back to my work. Mm. So, before dinner time, Agareth is asleep, understand. Uh, Lu Shang and Marlon, what would you guys... Well, what are you guys doing in this an hour window? Lu Shang. Uh, I'm just trying to rest my eyes for a bit and trying to think on over. It has been a wild few months. Since everything just went kaput. And just wondering, okay, this is the life I signed up for. I gotta make it right somehow. You gotta make it right somehow. So, you, you know, you rest deep in thought um, during the time. And my one. So, um, I think, yeah, he would. Um, I think he's going to, uh, first he's going to go, I think it's almost a, is that Ray? Okay, it's Ray. Um, who's going to be, oh no, it's AJ. So in terms of routine, I think he normally does uh, check on Argus every day, at least once or twice to make sure that everything's running smoothly. Um, he will go check on Bella first. Where is Bella on her rounds? Downstairs. Uh, Bella, is, Bella is back to the cockpit. Ah, so he, ah, we get to see the cockpit. Wonderful. So, uh, so you go upstairs? I do go upstairs, yes. Yeah. And you see Bella standing in front of um, the scanner just to make sure everything's still right. Uh, can you do me a favor and can you tell me which one of these machines controls the scanner? Is it this one or is it this one? Or one of these on the this side? Is, is, this, um, this one. That one. Got it. Okay. So she's yeah. standing there. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, this is Bella. Oh, cool. Oh, for the chat sake, no, she's not naked. That's just an open backed kind of outfit suit thing. This one. Push on. Down, down, down to the other image. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. I this see. One. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, all the dots. I appreciate your <laughs> your pointing help. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, cool. So she's standing down there, more or less. And I'm yeah. up there. Oh, I didn't mean to. Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to put her there. I'm sorry. Oh, I mean, oh. it works. I mean, yeah, you know what? Fair enough. All right, so yeah, he's standing there, and then Marlon's like, like right, right here. So he'll come up, and uh, he'll 
Let's just go to bell and go, Bella, how's everything looking so far? Things are normal. Well, save our new members, I suppose. You mean because they're human? No. <laughs> she, like, glares. So, okay, I don't even know if I have to make an insight check. I know that that's a lie. Yeah, that, that, is, a, that is a straight lie. Yeah, no, yeah. So, yeah, she's not trying very hard, it seems, to hide the bile. No, she that. is not. Uh, all right, so I take it you're not too happy about it. And you know what? That's totally fair. I wasn't happy that, you know, Resistance Command <laughs> saw fit to saddle us with two new members who I had no idea of the identities of and send them on this particular mission and then us right after we'd suffered a particular loss. So I do understand your frustration, Bella, but at the same time, we are one member down. We are going into a kind of unknown that we have no idea what will happen. And it could be useful to have some extra, you know, muscle and also forceful presence. Not that you're, not that you're not extremely proficient with being forceful. Um, it's just that I can see the reasons now for why they did it, but I would have liked them to have asked me first, you know, which crew they were actually assigning me. You know, so I could have told all you and determined if I actually wanted them on the ship or not. But after talking to them extensively, these are not your run-of-the-mill humans. They're not even like Charlie. Uh, they've seen what Cyberware can do, as much as I can tell. Uh, and they disagreed with it, which is why they're in the position they are now. So not just run-of-the-mill turncoats, but... You know, I don't know, it's possible that they could be something more than just what we think. So, why don't we give them the benefit of the doubt slightly? I know it's not possible entirely for you, and I understand to a certain extent, but... You are going to have to be working with them, and you are going to have to effectively manage them without cutting their balls off, so to speak. So, do you think you can manage that? And around this time, she finished checking everything. Hmm. She looks back to you. See, Captain, I'm... I might not trust them, but I trust you. Well, that I appreciate. So, and if hmm? and if you say that they are fixer uppers, then I'll I'll try my best to work with them. Thank you. I also until they've proven up otherwise. I was about to say I'm also assigning them to work under you because I know you're very quick with. Well, just about everything, but especially you have a very good eye for both perception and from long range, as we all know. She also, flashes you a toothy grin. And also short range as well, in terms of detail. And I need that kind of perception when it comes to two new members I don't know much about. But what I do know about, I know that I actually like quite a bit, as far as I can tell. But again, I'm a very optimistic person, which is why I you know, require m myself to have a bit more scrutiny than normal in most cases, so that's where you come in. I'd appreciate that you trust me in this capacity. And I'd also like to discuss with you a slight change of... I'm going to need you to be in a position for the entirety of this mission bell that you have not been in often, which is I need you to be my second in my second in command, because Rachel is out of action for now. So I'm going to most likely be deferring to you uh, in terms of duties. If I need to do something, uh, you will have the con. I need to know that you're ready for that. She stands tall and salutes. Ah, there go. You well done. Me. Well done, by the way. Uh, you finish patrols remarkably quickly. Also, hello, Shadow. Welcome. So glad that you're here now. Wonderful to have you. In terms of being the second, there's not much to that, except you're just going to have to do more shit. Um, but also be more <laughs> responsible. So I do appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I do believe you're fully ready. So 
That's about it. I'm gonna go down and check on Argus, make sure everything's running smoothly. I have a little project I'm gonna do as well. I need to craft something. Uh, it turns out that our one of the hu one of our humans. Uh, oh, that sounds so bad. Charlie is one of the humans too, and I can't call him one of our humans because he's older than most of you. So uh, I think I'm going to disappear for a little while. Tell me if anything happens, but I am going to start crafting something. It turns out one of the humans, the uh, Barlow, Agent Barlow one, is uh, religious in some way or is faith oriented. Or seems like they want to be uh, towards Tyr. She, she would raise a, raise a brow know. at that. I know. Surprised me too. But uh, yeah, I think a small holy focus isn't incredibly difficult to divvy up. So I think I'll start working on that for a little bit. Uh, and yeah, might get input here and there, but make a nice little, you know, a nice little ornament. Oh, I gotta show them the faith room. Oh, I need sticky notes or something. All right, Bella, carry on. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Take some rest, Captain. I'll get rest later. Remember, I'm <laughs> from up there and shit. I can be sleepless. All right, all right. Um, goodbye. <laughs> She would like. That's meta me. You know, he would not giggle well. like that, but I definitely would. Uh, yeah, no, I'd say okay. Uh, he's and gonna, she yeah. would walk back to piloting deck, um, probably to monitor everything while you go downstairs. Keep us on course. Thank you very much, Bella. All right, um, he'll go down to Argus and uh, check on him to make sure everything's working well. Oh boy, yeah. So if you guys look in the airlock hallway and decontamination center, if you look closely, you'll see there's a bunch of strange tiles on the floor. This is very weird. Why do those have palm trees on? I don't know. It was a design choice, you see. But the problem is because we built this in Sims 4, the Sim loves looking at these because they're inspirational <laughs> for some gosh darn reason and will stare at them for hours. I didn't mean to move that. It's okay. Uh, anyway, uh, but yes, the, he goes down the steps here, um, and he goes past the, uh, airlock bay and the moon pool, uh, which is where you can enter from the outside here, and those are the decontamination ones, and he's going to go, whoop, oh, they can be moved, oh, I see. Yeah, that's, that's what I just figured out are on accident. Using, darling, are we using anime boy? Oh, you read, this you read, is like, did you redraw him? Okay. No, no, no. This is like a placeholder right okay, now. Okay, this is approximation. Um, but time. It, it will be very similar to... This will be very similar to what he looks like, but... Um, if any of you play Apex, do not comment on that. Um, <laughs> do not comment on that. Anyway, uh, just so pretend that Mar yeah. Marlin you didn't see that. Marlin goes down the stairs through uh, to the uh, prayers room and faith room. And for those of you who are wondering what that looks like, this is what the faith room looks like. This is um, the place where most of the crewmates play. And without going too much into it, the ship does run on faith energy or divine faith magic or prayer. And various niches exist around the room in order to you know, facilitate that. Do you want to describe the room specifically yourself, darling? Or do you want to just go straight to the engine? Um, I'll, just, I'll describe the faith room after when you guys go to the faith room. Sounds good. Makes sense, too. All right. Uh, but, yeah, go yeah. So you go into the engine room. Um, you see Argus, as usual, sitting in front of the engine control at the moment. Um, presumably just working uh, on whatever that's needed. Besides, you, you see the normal uh, routine of the Faith engine uh, slightly buzzing uh, with energy. The charging up, charging up the storage in um, the fake sphere storage, and they are about half full at the moment, which is not enough for you to worry. Um, but you do know that in about two or three hours, someone will need to be in the faith room to pray yeah. for probably a bit longer. Yeah. And left to you, you see the monitors for faith storage 
the levels are still appearing normal. The crystals all uh, glowing with this low light that they, as they do always. Yeah, we... And Argus turns back to you, kind of nods. Argus, how is everything down here? Going well. Going well. Any fluctuations in power? Anything we need to worry about? Not at the moment. And he would, you know, point across the screen showing everything is still running as normal. And Argus, Though I am getting pretty hungry. I had a feeling. I was about to ask, and how are you feeling? And I had a feeling that the answer was going to be hungry. Charlie's <laughs> almost done. You'll be, we'll get, you're getting up there soon. Um, I just wanted to make sure everything was running smoothly so far. And I'm glad to hear that it is. We're going into unknown territory soon. So want to keep a close eye, particularly when we enter the... What is it called? Do we know? Is a specific name for it? A specific name for the what? cyclone beneath Cloud Nine. Uh, the Bermuda Triangle. Storm. The storm of the storm of Cloud Nine. Right, in the storm of Cloud, you know, the Cloud Nine storms area, which is dangerous. So I want to make sure you know nothing goes haywire while we're down here, but everything does look pretty good. Hmm? We should probably stock up on those. Face at some point. Ah, uh, yes. Before we go. No, yes. I, we will be doing that tomorrow. We got two new recruits. Uh, one of whom is actually uh, faithful, so that will be, you know, helpful in that respect. We'll probably all take turns. We'll do a mass, you know, fueling. Um, the last mission did take a fair amount out, and that's very astute. I guess we should do that just in case anything happens. Oh. That's right. I'm trying to determine. I was thinking of showing the new recruits the engine room, but then I realized maybe it's not the best idea quite yet. Maybe we'll do that later. What do you think as in charge of engine room security? You have some say in that, or at least I'd like your advice. Well, I wouldn't show them just yet. Hmm. Maybe after a couple weeks or when Bella accepts them. That will be a couple years, my friend. All right, so um, I hope that uh, this continues to stay static and steady. Uh, I know that you are getting tired. If you need to, um, we'll switch off a couple times and I'll run things here. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. You'll need a nap, as will I, Argus, as much as it pains to admit me. Admit it. <clears throat> you can't sleep in the engine room, and no, I will not absolutely not set up a sleeping bed inside of this room so you can keep an eye on it. All right, you are still getting sleep in your room. Otherwise, what's the point of having one? And, you know, he kind of grunts. And uh, around this time, you notice him looking a bit more sad, I would say, because usually when Rachel's here, Rachel's the one that switch him. off with him. I know it's... How is, how is her before you? Oh, I didn't get a chance. To. I know, I know, buddy. She's doing much better. Uh, she's not close to death, so that's good. She's in critical care, but she's recovering, they say, which is good. And, that's you good. know, Z9 gave me his opinion of it and said that she's almost certain to recover. The problem is, is that it never should have happened, and that is both my responsibility and that of Resistance Command, because they never should have sent us in there without telling us that it was a add-on to the mission we're doing now. But that's okay, because we'll push through, as we always do, but I know that it has affected all of us, so at some point we'll, we'll sit down and we'll share our feelings, talk to each other like people do, and it'll be uh. very awkward and very uncomfortable, and then at the end we'll feel better. He, like, does the resolute, because he knows how stubborn Argus can be. Yeah. But, you know, Argus kind of had to, not on the shoulder, because he can't reach up. No. Only probably on your lower arm. Yeah, I should, I should so, remind, how tall was Marlon? Did we say he was seven foot something? 
Yeah, six six foot nine to like six seven foot nine foot. to seven foot. No, yeah, he's tall. He's ridiculous. So, he's so tall that like his hair does this against the doorway, but very like <laughs> very slightly. Like, actually, no, the doorways are all very tall, so it's probably yeah. like a. Yeah, he's very. Yeah, when picking up Micah, I realized this, Caroline. Marlon's gonna do this. <laughs> 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 just little tiny halfling. Just da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Point B. But, um, you know, Argus pats you on the arm and says, You don't be too hard on yourself, Captain. Mm, that's my job, though, Argus. No, I get you. Ah, oh, it's hard not to be. It's hard not to be. But I, I will, uh,. I'll do my best as always. I need everybody to keep performing That's all admirably. I, ask. Hmm. I need everyone to keep performing admirably as they've been. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for keeping an eye on things. We'll have food soon. And then, yes, we will switch off. I know it's been needing you inside too. She'll be all right. Bye. All right. About 10 minutes or so, and you know, the dinner bell equivalent will ring. About Savior Charlie speaking through, going. Ooh. Because that is what happens. I think Charlie does use, I imagine, the intercoms in some way to like let everyone know. It's like the equivalent of a dinner bell. What does it sound like? I would say yeah. In about ten minutes, uh, Lou, Shane, Marlin, probably Marlin, now back into your office, just getting some more deals done before the, before dinner. And Gareth, you know, that's what will be waking you up. <laughs> um, is some soothing piano music. Oh my god, yes. It's like a little chime. Oh, that's beautiful. Exactly. And <laughs> to the people who are already been on the ship for a few years, this is music. This is like not just music music. This is heavenly music to your ear because that means food is Food. Ready. It's food is coming. Excuse me, hold on a minute. I have to try something. <laughs> no, that's 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 elevator music. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find like little piano if I had one. But... No, but, I don't. Um, <laughs> and to to you, Lucien and Gareth, you the two of you might not might be a bit conf like f confused at first until to the end of this like only a few second ring. It says dinner. Dinner's ready, guys. Let's dinner time. Day. Exactly, dinner time. Um. I'll see you in a few minutes. Everyone, please be here. And it's it's more stern than usual because Charlie is very specific. About Everyone must food. eat at the appropriate time for dinner. Yeah. Now. And both of you, uh, Lucien and Gareth, now roll another Constitution check <laughs> with the advantage because the yes, medicine. Because yeah, because yeah. Of the medicine and the tea. Both Come. that ones. Uh, don't don't, don't, check, don't right? do that. Well, that's not a constitution. That's, that's intelligence. That's, that's intelligence. Roll intelligence to see if you can think your way past the Z sync. Okay. Well, I got a sixteen. Uh, All right. Oh wait, why am I? I'm dumb. It's not a save. It's a check. Oops. Is it a check yeah, or a, a save? It's a check. Yeah, that makes sense because it's over a long course of time. And then because advantage. Okay, thank God for that advantage. That was a twenty-one. All right, this so Gareth, the nap, uh, the hour nap, definitely made you feel better. You, um, you wake up not really groggy, but feeling a bit more recharged. Um, actually, for the first time, you're like the growling in your stomach is actually because you are hungry <laughs> and not the other and not the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and Luce. <laughs> You, this hour of lying down has helped you so much alongside of the medicine that now the rocking sensation no longer bothers you as much. You feel like you can just walk around without any issues. And as the both of you come out, I would say you would see Marlon leaving his, uh, his quarter. Um, Gents, you're feeling a little better this I almost said this morning, this evening. Oh, you believe that? Uh, that scene that Charlie made worked wonders. Mm. He I'm actually, yeah. 
Oh, I'm actually, uh, yeah, starting to feel a little bit better, I must, I must say. I'm so very glad to hear that. I'm, I'm sure it was due to both the tea and also the tablets. I'm glad the combination has been so effective. All right, dinner time. Uh, I would love eating at the sofa, but sadly, if we do not eat at the table, Charlie gets very pouty for the rest of the evening, and it's not good to have that on the person who makes the food. So, uh, no, no, it's, it's also a nice little gathering, although it will feel empty without Rachel. But you two will be there, so actually we'll, you know, we'll fill it up a fair bit. Um, he's also going to whistle to uh, uh, Pirate Parrot. That is his name. That's literally his... No, he does... He actually, we did give him a name, didn't we, darling? No, you didn't. You said you are gonna... I did say that, didn't I? Yeah. Um, his name is... Ba... No, I will think of a name and I'll present one. Oh. Uh, His name is not. How about how how about uh, dinosaur related? Because because Ella because maybe oh, Ella because, because Ellie Ellie, right? Ellie will be inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Ella because Ellie. Uh, oh, we'll we'll think about this. We'll work it, They don't look like an Ella. <laughs> Sorry. That's fair. So yeah. you know, as you guys walk over Bronchi. um you would see that quite a few and uh, actually not quite a few everyone uh did you whistle and did para parrot follow you oh yeah all right so my name is Tim. as you guys walk the, walk over you see the what you thought was just a statue parrot uh like come to life <laughs> yeah hop down and you just see kung, 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 kung. Oh, he doesn't fly. He he walks. Not exactly. Uh, who did that? Me. Sorry. I like my boy. I'm trying to describe what they do, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so you see this giant like space owl like structure? That you thought it was just it was just an immobile sculpture, but now it's coming to life and it's hopping down to the hallway. It it doesn't look like it's chasing you down, but it certainly scares you a little bit. Oh God, it moves. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the scare. That's Ramus. Uh, that is his name now. Um, canonically, that's Ramus. <laughs> uh, he's our resident little pirate, pirate bird. Uh, he's, no, he's a friend, uh, the construct that I built a while back, um, is, uh, and he's also, how tall is he, darling? You would, you would get leave on this. He's medium sized, so it's up to you to decide if he's, like, five feet tall or four foot seven, or he, yeah, he could he's, literally he's be, around, like, he is around five feet tall, I would say, okay. so... Yeah. So oh no, this is a medium-sized just... bird. Yeah. This is like up to here. Up to, you, up to your shoulder, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, he comes and sits by the table. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, he like, as he go past you, both of you, uh, Lucian and Gareth, he like flaps his wings a little bit. But he couldn't do it, like, it couldn't do it not like, enough too space. much. Because there's not enough space, but it did like motion. This is another quotations uh, method of security, but I always like having them up for dinner. It's it's uh, it's nice. So, all of you sit by the table. Can we have across my... you? Across all of you, Gareth and Lucian. For the first time, you notice an android-looking creature. Um, he is very human looking on the face, but down on his neck and his hands are all uh, made out of metal and con like circuits. Silvery oil like and like panels and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Um, you would also notice that his eyes glows in a very abnormal blue um, with like glowing circuitry. Um, like shimmering in and out and you see him 
turning his head perfectly parallel to his body, to both of you, nods exactly 90 degrees, the only way that you can, like, you can assume, and then flashes um, what you can describe as robotic grin at the both of you. A robotic what? Grin. Grin. Grin, okay. Huh. Does Charlie come out with a... Has he... No, uh, Charlie... Charlie is sitting at the table, um, uh, kind of observing this. He is intrigued. <laughs> and so is, so is the rest of your crew, actually. I was Absolutely. asking if he brought the food. Is there food on the table? <laughs> oh, yes, there is food on the table. Um, it is, again, for the fifth time, uh, fish stew. Because, um... You have exhausted all of your other source of um, main protein. Uh, of course we have. <laughs> so it's mackerel... Uh, Macaroni? <laughs> Macaroni and cheese? No, no please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's macaroni, macaroni and stew. fish. <laughs> it's a uh, fish stew with like cabbage and carrots. And although it's tasty, because it is... But having it five times every single day oh, no, has we're been a quite enough. Gareth and Lucian are just going to be alone, 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 but we're going to be... <laughs> but, you know, the, all of you sit, and then you just see Z&I1S does, does the thing <laughs> that he does. What? That's ominous. What is, yeah. what, what is the thing that he does? He's no, doing he that just, thing that he does. Yeah, he just <laughs> he just looks at the both of you and then grins and then like stays perfectly still. As like Bella's and Argus and Charlie are starting to dig in. Oh well that's not unsettling at all. Green hey, well, mortal. Uh I don't, hey. think we, I don't think we met, uh I'm Lushane, and you are? Your savior. Z9, you know when I asked you if you had pain circuits? Okay, think back to that moment right now, because I'm this close to smacking you for crying. <laughs> it's not his actual voice. He's doing this, he does this every time someone new comes onto the ship, and sometimes when someone old comes onto the ship. <sighs> and uh, it's around this time when Charlie finally like cracks up and just like let out this like bright laughter he's, and followed by Argus and Bella. He's just, just a outside. normal android. It's not he's not some Gareth's been trying to like get bites of his food without like actually making eye contact with him. <laughs> the, the Shane is just and... bewildered because everyone's laughing and he doesn't know why. <laughs> But, you know, uh, as you say that, Marlon, um, you see Xenawana is actually smirking a little bit before he also reach out to, you know, grab a little bowl. I this, couldn't help myself. This it is, was I don't know. <laughs> fun. And then, like, he grins again. So, um, this is Xenawana. Uh, I am... And, uh, yeah, he's our resident medic and jokester. I am in charge of your health. You are welcome. Uh, well, thank you for, <clears throat> for the tablets. They were very, very helpful. Oh. Of course it is. Yes, I thank you very them. much. No you know, problem. you can be really creepy when you talk if you want to. Um, no, he is a very valuable, without him, most of us would be much more injured than we already are. But in terms of, uh, everyone else, everyone, crew, this is Gareth Zenick, uh, and also Lucien Barlow. These two are agents in the Resistance, they're new, and Resistance Command assigned them to us because they believed we needed more help. I know that how that sounds, but regardless, they seem to be of a relatively good sort, despite the fact that they're humans. And I would like you to welcome them as much as possible uh, in a 
amiable, if not mutually kind way. So, Lushane and Gareth, agents, both. Uh, this is my crew. We have, as you already met, seen on one s our resident medic. We have Bella, who is in charge of security, and also a tiny bit of, uh, well, I guess you could call her the patroller lookout, but does more than that. Good with a gun. Argus. Her, her, hmm? As you say that, like, you guys hear a very nasty sound of her, like, utensils dragging across the plate. Yeah, Bella, please. I understand uh, that neither of you have met Argus, though you have seen both of these. Argus, who is the dwarf sitting across from you, Gareth, is probably one of the better engineers that I've met. Used to do deconstruction in the resistance uh, of Aurora, but now he's, uh, well, now he's learned the ins and outs of the very complicated engine that drives this ship, and even made some very very fantastic improvements over the time that he's been sailing with me. So Argus is our engineer, and you've already met Charlie, our resident cook, which leaves only me, the captain and the leader of this multi-assortment of very interesting, wonderful, horrible, beautiful people, is how I would say them. Well, it is very nice to make all of your acquaintances. I do hope we can get along. Glad to meet you all. Any response? From anybody? Charlie was the first one that smiles and says, Welcome aboard, boys. Hope you guys can suit yourself and settle down soon. It's rough on the sea. Hmm. This is true. God bless and him. as he he finishes, Argus probably really focused on his food right now. It's like it's not it's it's he like he's looks. getting tired <laughs> he's getting tired of it, but he is super hungry. Um, he's like looks up briefly like, during as, bites. Oh. It's like exactly, <laughs> Bella. In the meantime, glares not daggers, but more of an inspection. You know. Um, Calculative. Yeah. yeah, trying to get a sense of both of you. And she Gareth nods airily, very rigidly. Gareth airily, uh, warily eyes her back. <laughs> Ooh, who blinks? She... Who blinks first? <laughs> uh, no, she smirks. <laughs> but who blinks? I want to know. Do they have a staring contest? Did, did they? Do, do you break eye contact, Gareth, or do you keep until like either one of you blinks? I'd probably just keep my uh, look at her until she smirks, and then I'll just oh. kind of go back to eating. <laughs> and Dino want us doing his usual thing. He's like, Welcome aboard. I hope you don't have to stay, and don't ever have to stay in my office. Well, you know, at least and he's he honest. At least he's honest, you know? That's uh, one thing you lads will learn here. There's nothing short of transparency that is exuded. <laughs> um, which is nice in a way. It will be a refreshing We are change. missing one crew member. Captain. All right. is this how Would you know like this? me to normally, normally... introduce? <laughs> no, he's totally doing a bit. Oh, okay, good. Keep going. Would you like me to introduce our missing member, Captain? He's like wondering if he has like a piece of Rachel's hair or something from a medical experience. <laughs> Jesus like, Christ. What uh, exactly do you mean by that, Xenomonas? <laughs> Rachel is back in Aurora. Yes, but her wanted poster is stuck in our... Recreation room. You will and see, like gentlemen, when you go back to your rooms, if you look to the left, and I'll just point right here if you guys want to see on the map, it's kind of hard to see, but right here, there's a little boxed frame of a couple different wanted posters, <laughs> and one of them does have the face of Rachel on it. <laughs> if 
You'll see that Rachel had a, yeah, a bit of a bit of a price on her head. A couple of us do from time to time. And uh, yes, that is what she looks like. She was a integral member. She was my second. Um, and when she comes back, she'll be my second again. But she was in charge of both security uh, to a certain degree, organization, but also she helped Argus quite a bit. So losing her is a bit of a blow to us. So, having Which you... is why you guys are here right now. And what? she like smiles. Uh, what? He smiles again. What he means to say is that you have some pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, in a slightly nicer tone, I'm sure. Hopefully. Good luck. <laughs> He's so passive aggressive. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> bitch. You'll anyway, need it. You will <laughs> need it. You terrible. Anyway. Sorry, I'm just fixing the stream. But, you know, for the, mo for the majority, the dinner passes without too much of a bump, if you pass my mm -hmm. food. Um, it's, it's a very fragrant type of stew. There's a lot of herbs put inside. Um, all of you are required to eat one orange alongside of your dinner. Uh, <laughs> Which, Mandatory orange. Exactly. <laughs> which for you, Lucian and Gareth, this is awesome. But you do notice Bella gagging a little bit because this is her third orange of the day. And oh. after a while, the orange just gets a bit too much. Fucking oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be an orange or are there substitutions? No, there ha it has to it be It has to be okay. <laughs> it's the only citrus we have available to prevent scurvy. Exactly. Yeah, so, <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna be okay, next time we go back to resistance, we're going to be asking for a requisition order of fucking fruit for you, Charlie, as well as some more varied supplies and food, because I will eat rations in between fish dishes, uh if we if we must, but you know, having some variation is good. However, you did cook this to perfection, Charlie. Thank you very much, as always. Of course, Captain. And uh, in about 15 minutes, I would say Bella is the first one to finish. Damn, that was um, quick. Yeah, she finishes really quickly. Yeah. Um, as usual, she cleans up, uh, despite Charlie's saying, oh, you don't have to. Insistence, you see Charlie, like, protest, and then she just... Yeah. She, like, squeezed past Argus going like going to the kitchen and then quickly washing everything off probably going to leave for more of a top deck monitor the mm. second one finishing is argus probably around the same time that i would say charlie and marlon you do as well in the, like about 30 minute in cna1s is taking his damn time because no one else is hurt and he's not on duty. Yeah. Um, and Lucien and Gareth, I would say you guys also finish around the same time, like about 30 minutes in. You know, it's the first big meal you guys have, and it's a pretty tasty for both of you. And given that you didn't expect that dinner is actually going to be good and you'll be able to stomach it, you actually felt really <laughs> good and really happy. I mean, it's an upgrade for them, like massively, as far as I know. Yeah. yeah. If you lived uh, in it's Butch, okay. Man. It's not like yeah. the next two days you guys will only have <laughs> fish <laughs> <to> <laughs> get this month. <laughs> um, we'll get to that fish dish when we get to it. It'll be but, delicious for three um, more days. <laughs> it and it's around you know early night, around seven when all of you are done. Um, what do you guys do? For the night. Uh, probably just... Um, oh. I guess if it's still a little too early for bed, right? So... It is around 7pm, so yes, it's a bit too early for bed. Probably just go and uh, retire in the rec room and just like 
since I have a deck of cards, just play some solitaire to pass the time. He has cards. All right. He has cards. So you walk over to the sofa, and as you said, it's an uh, it's a leather one. It's pretty soft and like soft, but plump. Sturdy. If you know what I mean. Sturdy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you put a deck of the card and. The other two, you notice that it is a card uh, that has green linings on top. Um, <laughs> like... There, yeah, exactly. Um, it looks like Cyberwork product, but it actually isn't. Um, it looks closely designed according to that, but. Um, None of like nothing else, n- nothing on top of the card says Cyberware. And as far as you know, Marla and Lucian, if Cyberware designed something, they put their logo big and center on mm. on top. So this one actually is quite taste uh, tasteful. I'm just going to imagine we're all in the record at this point. <laughs> I'm assuming, unless uh, Lucian or Marlin, you guys. Uh, have somewhere else to be, um, which was which is fine as well. I was just describing the yeah, deck no, of cards. I'll probably take a stroll around the ship just so I can get familiar with All the right. placement so, of the rooms. Uh, we will come. We'll go to you in a in a bit. Then Marlin. Marlin will go and sit uh, a little bit forward, and uh, he'll begin like. Yes, he pets his metal bird. He does. He pets the pirate parrot. He knows a place where, <laughs> you know, it's astral feathers or some shit. He pets his bird, okay? He pets his parrot. Every pirate captain's got to pet his bird. So he pets his bird. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for the... the that's that's true. So after having, like, done the he'll look over and I'll look at the cards, and it's like, you know, Gareth, those are some... Those are some pretty nice playing cards. I imagine you didn't acquire those in Glitch. Uh, no. They're a pack that my father bought for me a long time ago. Hmm. He's the one who taught me how to play cards. Are your, uh, your parents still, still around, or...? Yeah, they're both still alive. Uh, don't really know if they want to see me anytime soon, though. <laughs> ah, right. You were high up, uh, so to speak, and then you basically spoke out because you didn't approve of a particular something, and then they cut you off, basically. Something close to that. I was helping out people that they definitely wouldn't have approved of, and, well... When Cyberware started to poke their noses in to find both Jack and anybody connected with them, uh, I got dropped in Glitch for my own protection, in a way, I suppose. Hmm. Sounds like a, uh, a booting out of for bad behavior, almost. I mean, I support... I do absolutely support the rebellion and its efforts. Resistance but now, but I the resistance it either yes. way. No, it's confusing. They got like thirty different fucking names for it. You go ahead. But I, I'm here because I can't go home. Essentially, Marlon's gonna look down and he's gonna. He's gonna mold his hands for like a solid. 20 seconds and just you know something Gareth I think I can relate to exactly what you're talking about I understand that feeling very much I don't really have a home not well recently with a friend of mine who we're going actually to save check on hopefully still alive (laughs) Um, uh, her name is Micah, they're a scientist in the resistance. We recently got a small place in Aurora, and, uh, it's a small apartment, it's not, 
you know, nicer than this ship, less nice, but it's the first time I've actually felt semi, you know, comfortable, but still not home. My home is not something I can actually go back to unless a certain amount of conditions, so to speak, are met. So, uh, I do yeah. very much feel... No, it sucks. Royally, because home should be something you can go back to whenever you need to. For support, for stability. This ship, these people more than anything in my home, but... Uh, it's just not the same a lot of the time. So I do feel you in many ways. If we can do something about that in the future, I would very much like to, because I know how that feels. Everybody here does, actually, to a great extent. Bella can't. I don't even know if Bella knows where home is. Argus. Argus never told me about his home much, but I imagine it's buried in a very literal sense. Charlie doesn't really want to go home for reasons that, you know, kind of make sense. And Rachel... Well, Rachel is doing this more for home, I guess you could say. But yeah, no, it's... That's a very... empathetic thing. But no parent should ever... kick out their child just because they did something they thought was right that they didn't approve of. Mm -hmm. oh, won't do that. I feel like a lot of us are, well, let's say that in the positions we find ourselves in, and this is how I choose to rationalize this, we've all become wild cards. Now, a joker outside of the deck the deck being, I guess, the world, the game the world continues to play without us, has no power, means nothing alone. And if the world continues to go on in that way, then what will happen is, you know, you'll get hands that either mean nothing or hands that small victories, but nothing much. But us all as wild cards, if we were to ever be put back in to the deck, well, the wild card represents infinite possibility. And when you do that, you can make the impossible possible. And I think maybe that's what we're going to try to do here. You know, I've never met somebody who used such an effective visual aid or example. That is an incredibly effective way to explain a particularly esoteric concept. The Joker can be anything, that's the point. It can do anything, it has limitless potential, but it needs others to... Oh, that's good. Damn, Calvary would get a kick out of that. I think you're gonna get along very well here, guys. <laughs> that makes me very happy. Just to have seen how you said it, that's a very, very good way to think about it. And he looks kind of surprised. He's kind of, like, taken aback. He didn't really expect that, you know, effective of a philosophical, like, statement, but through cards. Um, wow. Ah. Uh, I, uh... You might have to teach me how to do that sometime. <laughs> I've always liked the idea of cards. It's always a fun... But I can never seem to... <laughs> I go too My father... fast. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, please. My father taught me a lot of different tricks and tried to teach me a lot of different lessons. And I didn't... Obviously, I didn't take all of them because I feel that some of them had carried the wrong message. But 
I learned and adapted what I wanted to take from him and made it my own. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, yeah, Caroline, you can totally go if you need to. Oh, because your video window. Thank you very much for telling me beforehand. Oh my god. I apologize for interrupting this moment. Oh um, no, you're fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. You can go. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> okay. Let me just shrink this down. Uh, go Reddit. Could you? I'm so sorry, Reddit. Do you think you could repeat what you had said? Oh, uh, yeah. Just my dad taught me a lot of tricks and tried to teach me a lot of things about life, the way he viewed things, and hmm. some of those things I took to heart, but a lot of them carried the wrong messages, so I've learned to adapt them and to more That's suit my own ways. That's the way to do it. I mean, if you... Just because the way that somebody explains something isn't, you know, or doesn't fit you, so to speak, doesn't mean that it's the concept can still be valid if you find reasons to make it so, if you find better reasons to make it so. So you're much, apologies, Gareth, I shouldn't have assumed that you're a much deeper man than I, I initially took you for. You looked fairly, you know, you're a great example of how a wild card can seem so unassuming. That the Joker is kind of a clown and not many people take it seriously. I'll remember that. It's good to have you on board. I'm gonna go and work on something. I've also got to show off with Argus in terms of engine duty. You have a good night. You oh, too. And if you and he'll like clap his hand on the shoulder and be like, oh, and if you're into music, by the way, you can search through a couple of the racks over there by the player. It's older than you might think, but you might find a couple of cool pieces. Thank you. I might do that. All right. All right, good night, Gareth. Sleep well. We'll start at the crack of dawn in terms of the tour, but also in terms of ship role assignment. Uh, you have a good night. All right, come on, You Ramus. as well, Captain. Thank you. Thank you, Zanuck. <clears throat> and he'll uh, whistle to Ramus to hop after him. Sure. You were going to shift gear a little bit, dial back the time. I would say about 30 minutes or so. 18, 20, yeah, that makes Oh, to uh, Lushane. I'm going to go to the bathroom Lushane, real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. Lushane, where would you like to explore on the ship? I would like to explore, let's see, because we were pretty much... Uh, okay, so this is... Probably the top and lower decks, because walked around here already. Mm -hmm. Into the captain's quarters for the interview. All right. So, wherever I haven't explored quite yet. Would you like to explore top deck first or lower deck first? Top deck first. Mm -hmm. Top deck. All right. So, you walk upstairs, directly facing you is a very strange looking room. You feel that it's it looks like a blend of current technology and some other um, structures and machines that you quite, don't quite, haven't quite seen ever in, uh, in your 32 years of life. Um, you see directly behind the piloting deck, um, in the piloting deck, now looking at you with a raised brow, is Bella. Don't mind me, just getting the lay of the land here. I figured... She eyes you in a very 
um, you know, calculating way again, um, as she, she pauses to, like, halt uh, her work. Uh, she calculatingly looks at me, I yeah. try to speak up a bit and say, My name is Lu Sheng, although you probably knew that. I feel that it means more coming from the person. And if our first meeting, I felt like we got off on the wrong foot, I hope we can work well together. She hesitates, and when she says, you know, I will be honest, I don't trust you, but if Marlin states otherwise, I will give you the benefit of a doubt. So long as you don't step over the line, like so many of your kinds do. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. That's good. That's good. Do you have anything else you have to say? No, no, just, just pondering a bit. I'll get out of your hair for now. And then I go downstairs below deck. Unless she says something in retort to that. No, she nods. You know, in a good, get out of my face kind of way. Takes you about like a, a little bit. Because the stairs is a bit or disorienting, I would say. Uh, all around. Um, and downstairs is even more confusing for you outside directly walking downstairs there's two doors one to your left one to your right you vaguely remember coming in through the airlock um coming in through the airlock and like walking upstairs but you don't quite remember um other ways and where would you like to go first because there are places that you're like, so every one of you who came on board, uh, Marlon would have assigned you a little piece of crystal card. With this, you will be able to open the certain rooms. Mm -hmm. And so far, every room that you've opened are, you know, pretty much you're allowed. But in on this deck, there will be rooms that you cannot open. So let me know where you would like to go first. I'll probably go around towards this direction, because if I've already been through here, I would assume we just walk through here. Yeah, yeah. So, I'd like so, to know what's by that door. You walk outside and to the familiar, pristine-looking uh, hallway. And toward your left, uh, through the door, you can see that it's a, it's a bay where you assume this is where people pull cargoes in. Uh, Toward the side, there's lockers and decontamination pods. Um, the same ones that you and Gareth stood in when you first came on deck. And directly toward the end of the hall, inside of the room, is storage. And you would see closest and right in front of you is a vault-looking dark black door with um, a lot of warning signs written on top in different languages and on one of the common language is warning strong room you have a feeling that what whatever is put inside is either incredible value incredibly valuable or dangerous and maybe that's why and around you you see a few uh code storage you see a few boxes um you see three kegs three like very old-fashioned traditional beer keg which you find a bit hilarious you had me scared you had me thinking there were gunpowder kegs oh no no no, no. <laughs> and walking further away um it's another smaller dorm with warning signs on it and you um you see only a, a tiny strip of window on the on the door and through the window you can see unlit is what looks like to be like 
a place with armory, uh, like armory storage, um, gym related. Yeah, you see racks on the wall, lockers at the end, but again, it's super unlit, so you can't really see. Oh, I guess I better come back here with the captain later. And then I'll just go back up the stairs and probably head towards the rec room and see what books they have just to pass the time. As you come back, I would say you come back around the same time that Marlon is just about to leave because their conversation was about, I would say, half an hour. You took about half an hour. So around this time when Marlon, you stand up uh, patting Ramus to the hint that Ramus come with you, you see Lucian coming inside. Did you have a nice walk, Lucian? Yeah, I got a better lay of the land around this ship now. Hmm. What was your favorite part? And he looks kind of, for this, like a couple seconds, he looks much more like an excitable, kind of giddy person than he did beforehand when he like was sort of maintaining a different kind of persona. Interested in the room that's beyond the storage. Seems that it was some sort of armory, but I also saw that there was equipment there. Ah, yes. Exercise equipment. That would be the training room as well as the gun range. We will definitely be taking a trip down there tomorrow to test out what your skills are. Uh, and if I remember correctly, yes, there is a few. I guess they can be used for both close up and long range. So yeah, I, we can get you. Uh, we can get you kitted out. I'm going to head to uh, bed for just a bit. Probably I'll switch off with Argus later in the night. But you two should get some rest when you can, because we're going to start early tomorrow. So uh, yeah. Enjoy your time, but don't stand up too late, you two. You have a good night, Agent Barlow, Agent Zenek. I'll see you tomorrow. As he leaves, Ramus <laughs> hopping behind. And that leaves just the two of you. And around this time, it's around, I would say, 7.30, 7.45. So, first day here on the ship. What do you think, Agent Zenek? Well, not to be too rude, but it is, it is Zenek. Uh, it's pronounced Zenek, not Zenek. <laughs> it's Levi O's. <laughs> apologies, Agent Zenek. No, you're you're okay. The crew seems widely varied. I was in Glitch for a little bit, and even I didn't see that wide of a variety of races wandering around. Very interesting. It's quite the team that he picked up here. Very, like you said, interesting. Varied. I don't think his security officer likes us much. Yeah, had a brief uh, run-in with her. Mm -hmm. Try to be polite, and, well, she's not particularly trusting humans. Well, maybe... I don't... I don't exactly blame her. Yeah, me neither, to be honest. Maybe given time she'll start to warm up. Mm. I hope so. Not a lot of space here on this ship. <laughs> Definitely can't avoid bumping into him. So you too, also in Glitch, parents connected with Cyberware? Yeah, my parents ran a security uh, securities firm that worked for uh, directly with Cyberware. Pretty profitable, too. Mm. It was all... Mm. 
they used all that money to get me all kinds of private tutors and stuff growing up. I, they they didn't much care for me though. They were there for the paycheck. It was Shane. only. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Just kind of laughs to himself when he hears, he hears that. Yeah, the only one of the tutors that actually did take a shine to me was when things started to get dangerous and they hired someone to teach me how to defend myself. Guess they didn't know that he was ex uh, resistance. And that's where. I learned that's where I learned how to fight some of the tricks that I still have up my sleeve and basically got shown that my parent or at least my father anyway has been working for a company that's pretty much openly racist and oppressing the other races such it's a big turning point for me at least you had someone there to help you at least help you see the truth for what it was well yeah because I can't go home anymore he's the one part of my past that I still have and I can still find and reach out to. That's good. Keep them close. Yeah. How about you? Or I think something about uh, you being an ex-peacekeeper? Well, you're right. I was a peacekeeper. I guess I was a bit in too deep with cyberware. I don't know if... I used to be a judge for one of the district courts. Hmm. Presided over magical cases. Similar to you. Parents just saw me as an asset. Carry on their legacy. Best schools, best tutors. They weren't there in moments that counted. But I still managed. I had someone to look after to look after me. But through my time in the courts, I just couldn't. Spoke up against. Spoke up against the jury, prosecutor on the case. They didn't like that one bit. Kick me to the curb. Disowned by parents, then later gave me a severance check. Nowhere was safe. Cyberware was everywhere. I chose Glitch because, at least in my time there, I knew that's where they had the least amount of jurisdiction. I fear mm. that they're coming after me. And I won't get to see it through the end. Well... You never know. Seems like we're both in a place now where we might be able to make more of a difference. Yeah. And they ain't bad. This new life. Maybe you're right. We could make a difference. It's better than the dirty cot I was sleeping on for like a week or two at any rate. Speaking of which... Oh, 
I think I might go hit the hay. I'm gonna just do the same. Early training and all. Yeah. Have a good night, Agent Zenik. You as well, Agent Barlow. And then they'll just part their ways back to their rooms. The two of you return to your chamber, <laughs> your your little quarter. I need to um, say something. I'm so sorry. Oh my god! Fantastic roleplay moment. I I just need to just. I would say yeah. Both of you. Um, <laughs> next time, next time when you play, you get DM. Uh, next session, you both of you get DM. A thousand Yay. bits. Thank you so much, the thousand bits, Baku, for the edge. There is so <laughs> much you could feel it. <laughs> the sword of heroes says my legend. You can cut yourself just by looking. Ah! <laughs> that is what it was. It was beautiful. <laughs> that axe in AJ is perfect. I love Thank it. you. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Doug. So just keep that in mind. Both of you have been inspiration mm -hmm. um, for. Okay. No, for your brilliant roleplay moment. That was really heartfelt. Oh, yeah. But first night on the sea was peaceful. It was not like where you've been sleeping, um, but at least it's clean. It's relatively safe so far as all of you know. Um, you can, as you drift off, you can hear occasional footsteps from probably whoever's retreating back to their room or doing patrol duty. So both of you have peaceful dreams for the first time in in a while. Um, maybe it's the gentle ocean wave that calls it. Or maybe it's just the fact that you guys are both so tired from the day. I would say, Lucien, you dream of your maid. As when you were younger, you almost relive a scene where she's telling you stories of her daughter and you sitting there wondering when you're going to meet her. And Gareth, you dream of training with Jack. A really exhilarating sparring fight waking up both of you feeling a lot more recharged and ready for the day as for marlin before you go to bed i was yeah. before you go to bed what would you like to do so um i wanted to know how long it would take me uh I'm sorry, I just opened up Discord accidentally and I saw the gift that I sent you of the edge and it just threw me completely. Um, it's just of a high school guy <laughs> pretending to be an edge lord and he's there and he's going, Ugh. and so, excuse me. So what I wanted to know was, um, conceivably, how long, maybe over the next couple of days, I'm not sure, how long would it take uh, to craft a, uh, like a holy symbol? I just wanted to know. I would say about two hours, probably. Uh, Nick has just raided us. Hello, uh, new viewers, oh. also known as Nick the Lord Baron's raiding party. So sorry, you guys just oh, missed the best awesome. edge moment character building you, of all. Like you guys just of missed. all time, but I do recommend you watch the stream. Hello, everybody, America. <laughs> Welcome, to America. It's great actually because AJ has a very awesome Southern accent. Mommy says she loves you more. Well, you tell Katie that I have a deep regard for her as well. Welcome, everybody. Hope you guys are doing Welcome. well. Uh, Eldora is DMing this one. This is a cyberpunk mm -hmm. fantasy themed campaign. It's pretty cool. We're on a ship right now. Those pictures of the outside from the captain's quarters that you see are actually just a camo screen. It's not just actually nice, high priced American. Uh, hey there, Eldora. How's the DM seat? How does the DM seat feel, darling? How do you feel? Um, I feel great, especially after that role play. Like, put, it puts so much emotion in my heart. Mm. I she love seeing my party interact. Eldora is a phenomenal DM, and I am I am proud to be in such a game. Anyway. <laughs> but to return from yes. 
Ah, uh, Ray is here. I thought it felt sexy. God darn it. I'm sorry. Point bean. <laughs> Point God bean. damn it. <laughs> Point bean. Excuse me while I take a long sip of water. I'm trying to set the scene here, guys. I'm trying to set the scene. Here. Yeah, how dare you call Ray amazing and cool and stuff. So, no, you, uh, uh, Ray, you are amazing and cool. That's true. So is AJ. And so are you, Ray. And I'm here. Uh, Point bean. Is that you're, you're okay. amazing as well, Marlon? <laughs> Thank you. Everybody is doing an amazing job tonight. Absolutely. So, um, I uh, wanted to ask how long it would take me to make a holy symbol because it would spend you would spend the rest of the night. Like this is the last thing you can do before right. you go to bed. Right. Of course, uh, it makes total sense. At least I have to take at least the rest of the night. So I'm asking, how much are holy symbols in your game? Classically, five e is fifth five gold pieces. How much are they normally, when I say how much, I mean like how many credits, gold pieces, quotations, would uh, I have to expend to make one? If it was more expensive because they're more rare. I would like... say yes. It's about 50 credits. So it's expensive because these aren't normal. It is. Okay. Fair enough. This is like a third edition. Okay, so this is a, a very nice, right? Mm-hmm. No, I mean, it, it's a very nice... Uh, it is a very well-detailed holy symbol. Yeah, so okay. I would okay. say roll me a check. Um, okay, add proficiency. Once I can open, yeah, no yeah add proficiency. Because, bonus. oh, jeweler's tools, that's what I'll be using, got it. Yeah, and also additionally, uh, roll for a religion check as well. Oh, all right. Do I make the religion check with advantage because I'm me or no? I honest, honestly, I do not know, but I'm wondering if that's how it works. I, I honestly don't know. Um, no, yeah, I would say I maybe no. I'd have to have some direct connection or relation with. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Tier is wisdom and logic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, no, that's not it. Uh, oh, do we have pictures? You just of... roll the strength. You didn't roll. No, 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 no. That was from before. That that's not that's not my. Oh, okay, role. okay. That's not my roll. I was like, no, no, no. So, um, do we have a picture of the workshop? No. Uh, no, not okay. yet. Well, that, I think that... I'm gonna leave it as a mystery for now. That makes sense. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Uh, yeah. So he goes in his room and he goes into his workshop and he begins working on very minute details. He makes, I think he'll make a little circular base. It'll be like more like a medallion, and he'll mm -hmm. make like a sort of protruding like silver and gold surface. He's using a lot of metals and a lot of alloy and a lot of pretty stuff. It's going to look really, really nice and high quality, which is why it's costing 50 gold. You just missed some great character moments. <laughs> Oof. Uh, so, as you do that. Uh, sorry, all right. I'll, I'll roll, sorry. Uh, yeah. Roll intelligence for the jeweler's kid. Yeah. That's plus three, so dirty 20 for the crafting. All right. And then religion? Yes. Okay. Religion. That's a seven? <laughs> Does, is that, I mean, come on. I made the thing. It's up to him to do the thing with the thing. So, I'm going to describe. Okay. You spend the rest of your night um, focusing on um, making holy a new symbol. holy symbol that's not half broken right. it's very well crafted everything else uh everything is melted down and reconstructed in a very meticulous way you vaguely remember uh the symbol that you saw on Lucian's, um and you you try your best to recall it and you're pretty sure uh it tears Symbol looks exactly like the one that you put on this. Um, like scales, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. And you, you, you feel a bit unsure. Like for a second, you almost like I did not was it, pay enough attention. Was it a war in hammer, God's or class? Was it just no. I feel like it was balanced scales, and then was it a hammer in the middle, or was it was it a sword? I'm just gonna leave it as scales. That'll be good. It's an all-arounder. And that's what he does. You know, he makes a bounce scales, you know, so. Yeah, so... 
at the end of the night, I would say you would be able to complete this. Um, in terms of crafting-wise, very smoothly. Uh, in terms of content-wise, you are not sure until tomorrow you give it to Lucian. He's like, ah, I can make mod, and again, he could modify. If he yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, God, he's so... a fire religion. <laughs> can I consult you, my yeah. catalog? Do I have one? The audience just know that uh, this party has is rose notorious. My character low. backstory, my equipment, my stats, my rolls. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, thank you very much, uh, Doctor Havana Han Hanabe. Doctor, ha ha I'm going to call you Han. I'm going to call you Doctor Han. Thank you very much, Doctor Han, for coming on in. I know it's not how you pronounce it. It's probably Dronave or something. But uh, welcome. Thank you for following. Good. All right, but <sighs> you also go back to your room. You know, Ramus goes back to his uh, stand and then like closes its eyes as it starts, you know, resting a little bit. Um, in the meantime, you go back to your room. Feeling a bit tired, you probably take a short bath, I would say. Um, you take a short bath and then sleep for about four to five hours um, in the middle of your long rest you and then you wake up to go to the engine room for like just about two hours to rotate with Argus and then come back to finish your sleep before the dawn breaks and yes for you it's always it's also a rather peaceful night it was a bit of a hard struggle in terms of rotation now that Rachel's not there and I would say as you do monitor for the engine room you do miss her um, but overall it's not too hard to manage the second day arrived it was it was sunny on the sea there's barely any clouds um, you all wake up to the gentle ringing that only symbolizes Charlie's breakfast is ready. And more often than not, this is how the crew wakes up. Charlie is always the first one before everyone else to be up and running, preparing for um, a new days of be it coffee and tea, things like that. So, the three of you wake up. What do you like to do on the second day? I, oh, I <laughs> we all start talking <laughs> at the same time. Introvert. Also, Doronave is a very cool name. I'm sorry that I said Dr. Hanava. Uh, <laughs> Doronave, welcome. And a Discord link for our channels or in there if you guys would like to come by and join love to see you i think marlon's gonna wake up um brush off the symbol a bit and put it in his pocket i think right. and then he's going to go out and go into breakfast all right yeah mm. shane's gonna get up kind of Part his hair that's kind of covering his eyes a little bit, pull on his glasses and head towards the bathroom to kind of freshen up before heading for breakfast. I would say as you do that, you 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 do walk into like a half half naked Bella. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, that I just came out of nowhere. Tomorrow. No, Wait. you absolutely do. Which Bella actually doesn't appear to mind all that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the curse of the drow agent. You can't escape him. Uh, point B. Wait, hold on. I need to clarify something. Did he walk by the bathrooms and go... Or did he go into the bathroom? And then see... Like, I didn't hear that, I'm sorry. Presumably into, because I'm going into the bathroom to, like, 
brush my teeth, so you comb went, my hair. Oh, so you didn't open the shower stall or one of the bathroom stalls? No! <laughs> okay, gotcha, right. I mean, wait, we have glass doors, wouldn't he have seen? Maybe he's distracted, I would assume. Oh, that's fair, looking through his yeah, toilet but... <laughs> And I got like, the sleepies in my eyes. Exactly, you know, like, Bella, uh, as Bella finishes up getting ready, and, like, you, you know, about to back away, you see, you hear Argus passing, it's like, oh, we don't care much about privacy. Right. Especially not by. in the morning. Eh, privacy's ancient. Uh. It's like, no one, no one really cares, you know. It's, like, it's alright. Uh, and then, you know, like, kind of laughs as he, like, like, barely stifling a yawn. At the same time, it, he has been up for hours at this point as well. Without, I would say, without Rachel, it it definitely takes a toll on Argus' mental, my physical health in terms of sleep. I try to focus my attention away from from Bella. As <laughs> oh, I'm just from all that. <laughs> respectfully looking away as I'm just I'm doing, brushing my teeth, combing my hair. Just want to get breakfast. Don't want to make her more pissed off at me. <laughs> Hello, city boy. <laughs> <laughs> and how about Gareth? Around at this, around the time when you know Luton awkwardly, quickly oh, you see, scrambling he walks in to on get Argus his... in the other bathroom. <laughs> 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 oh, hello, boy. Come to take a gander, have you? <laughs> Uh, so Gareth is gonna kind of sit up out of bed and just kind of hold his head for a moment and try to center himself to still try to get over just a little tiny bit of seasickness that's sticking with him just a bit. And Aww. once he's gotten, kind of gotten himself centered and dealt with, he's gonna throw on pants. And pants are very important. <laughs> he's got a white t-shirt, and he's going to grab one of his black button-up shirts, but he's, he's just going to throw it on over his shirt. He's not going to bother actually buttoning it up yet, because he's just, he doesn't care about putting in the effort this, in the morning yet. And then that he's going to... That is gonna... so valid. I would say it is man, like, right man, now it's like around run, seven wolf, in the you know the time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is around seven in the morning, so like, Charlie, Charlie makes an effort to wake everyone up early, and like, yeah. to start a whole new day. But sometimes it does get on people's nerves. It's like, I just want to sleep in. Oh, no, for, totally. Like, and also, day. like, the way that he starts as well is, like, always accompanied by the little, like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I just, uh, you know, sometimes, especially I would say later on, you will notice Rachel, like, getting incredibly snappy in the morning because Rachel is so much not a morning person. Yeah. But we for now, her grumpy self. So. You don't have her grumpy self at the moment. So, alright, so you stay in your room a little bit. Around the same time, I would say Marlene also finished getting ready, getting out of your door. I get um, out, dress myself normally, I have a whole assortment of leather jackets to pick from. Oh, he has one and many of the same shirts and pants. He, again, Marlon doesn't have a concept of... S this is not projecting for me, I have no idea what you're talking about. Does not have a concept of style. Um... He dresses in similar drawstring. It's very old style. Um, similar drawstring pants and shirts. Uh, so similar to the one I was wearing. Um, so yeah, he uh, yeah he dresses himself. He comes out. He takes. I think he does. He take Ramus with him. <laughs> kind of think. Does he take Ramus everywhere he goes? Uh, yeah, she'll probably leave Ramus there for the time being, uh, and he'll he'll make his way out into the into the rec room. And uh, he'll yeah. probably wait. And around the same back. time, as you enter, I would say, Bella steps out, you know, in her sports bra and, like, nothing else more than, no, like, wait, just no, no, hold on. Oh, no, 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 wait a pants, minute. pants, and sports bra, maybe with something lightly yeah, yeah. thrown over That's it, yeah? I, yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. <laughs> I have to clarify what? that, because when you say what? sports bra and nothing else, that means sports no. bra and nothing else. No. Which is a little bit... <laughs> we might be pirates, but we're not quite that 
We're not quite no, no. there yet, so to speak. <laughs> I, should have, I should have reversed that. Nothing, nothing is more than sports for us. And like... answer for losers, anyway. <laughs> it's the American way. Shot of ketamine, electrocute your nipples, and dress in your nation's flag. <laughs> Nick, what happened to you tonight, man? You doing okay? Oh, shiver me Tim. Oh, fuck off. Anyway, comes in. Bella steps out. He nods. It's normal. Um, yeah, and he just like this is normal sight for you guys already. And like for, for you especially. Mama. He looks in, you know, to the glass. Does he see Lucian if he walks by the glass door? Uh, she, I would say... You yes, really need to get a new door! <laughs> Lucian's a little red in the face. <laughs> Walks out, he's like, You doing alright, Lucian? Oh, 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 mm, yeah, we probably should have mentioned that. Uh, a lot of them aren't many privacy-oriented. I myself wear them because I find them comfy and, uh, warm. Apparently, Bella doesn't get very cold normally. Uh, so yeah, there's, uh, there, there is that. Oh, it's, I love how she her may not art... Be very, she may not be very cold, but she certainly is cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's something to watch out for. We had, actually, the reason, <laughs> the reason the doors are glass is for that very reason. So you can actually see in if someone is. So just make sure to always look through, and then you can decide whether you want to go in or not, so to speak. Uh, don't worry, it's, uh, you'll get used to it eventually. Uh, I do apologize for not giving you a heads up <laughs> in the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry for laughing. Uh, I don't need her hating me more than she already does. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's, that's good, that's good. And, oh, you, and Marlon, Lucian, you can't see, but Marlon, you do see Bella kind of like not like you know, smirking and like, but barely stifling a laugh. Oh, did you do that on purpose, Bella? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. It was a kind of. Don't worry. It was, it was a kind of test. I think, as far as I can tell. Um, all right. I think I'm gonna get ready. Sit down. Have some. Have some grub. I'll be out shortly. <laughs> And breakfast is a lot less structured. You all would notice in the cafeteria area, there's a assortment of random fruit. Unfortunately, the main dish is still fish stew with some sort of bread on the side. You know, for now, Lucian and Gareth, the both of you still find it very enjoyable. But you do have a feeling that very quickly... You might not if this continues to be the reality. On the side, there is, yes, indeed, exactly the number of oranges that each and one of you will need. Um, Argus is already having his ball, like, kind of grunting his way through the fact that it is now the fourth day for him to have fish stew and orange and he doesn't know how long he's gonna have that no, i'm just i'm oh. sorry all i can hear is hobbit the giants just going mutton yesterday mutton today and it blimey if it don't look like <laughs> mutton tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> oh it's gonna kind of vendetta against oranges at this point sorry to dinner for breakfast huh. C91X walks in, you know, uh, waves at you guys. Look, uh, appearing a lot more normal than yesterday, is what I would say. It's like, good morning, guys. Oh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> he talks normal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, he doesn't say much. Uh, I would say the android is not quite a morning person against popular belief. Um, he grabs an orange and probably only an orange and nothing else and sits down. Almost glaring at the orange, this guy. Um, but the rest of you. Apologies. Uh, we're giggling because fucking Nick is like a big helping of mayo really kicks things off with the fish stew because 
don't you want to see the face of manas, manatee? Um, so, uh, <laughs> you can shove that mayo up where you know, and, um, yeah. Actually, I would say there is indeed a bottle of mayo on the cafe counter, if you would like <laughs> Amazing. some mayo. I'm taking a spoonful and just dolloping it. Come out of the bathroom, I get some fish, take some cheese, put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> We sit down, we have some fish fish stew for breakfast. Guess yeah, gonna I... look up. Mm -hmm. I was hoping for eggs. Or... Yeah. Uh so have we for the past few days. Um again, it, as I said. Is earlier, fish all there is right now? Uh-huh. We haven't gotten a order of food through in a while, which um Clementine assured me would change when we got back from this mission. Quite a bit of change. We get our pick of the next installment of Produce and Food because we've been going on fish for quite a while. And Charlie deserves some ingredients to flex his skills. Very, oh. very good. Okay. Charlie raises his spoon. Lovely. Oh, yeah. Then... No, oh, yeah. I, believe me when I tell you that we all feel that. Um, we'll be getting some food, uh, as time goes by. We might, uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a small, maybe we'll hit a grain factory or produce Eesh. factory before we go back. That could be good. Yeah. It's not like Cyberware is equally distributing the bloody food, so why the hell might know where you take some? And you can drop <laughs> some off on some of the outlines if you want to. Now that adds more hours to the trip, so we'll... I'll discuss that later. Um, so, uh, today, we've got just a travel agenda. Normal. We'll do training with you all and, uh, you know, sort of a tour. Yeah, most tour of sorts. How did you both sleep? Actually, surprisingly well, I must say. I'm glad to hear that. The seasickness isn't doing as much. Well, if Burr has slept in a few months. Oh, that's right. I imagine this would be an upgrade from Glitch's single apartments where you don't know if someone is going to get you or not. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. It's amazing, the conditions. Well, I'm glad that you had a good sleep, both of you. Um, oh, actually, that is... Something that I did want to ask. Uh, and I'm trying to remember if I... Um, I think I did ask this in the interview. I asked them if either one was faithful, did I not? I think I did. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, you yeah. did. I think I did, yeah. You asked us both. I did ask you both, that's true. Um, in that case, now he'll sit back, start continuously eating as much as he can. As much as he can stomach. As much as I can stomach. <laughs> It's food. Um, as usual, Stella and Charlie are the first one to finish up, and following by Zina one S. Um, Argus it finishes around the same time as you guys, but he doesn't speak with you a lot because he is on duty uh, to the engine room, so he wants to return to there as soon as possible. Um, so it's Bella. You notice Bella, zo like practically zooming past you back to the pilot room to make sure that uh, everything's still back on track. Um, C91S, however, seems like he will be taking quite a bit of time uh, in the recreation room as he's now oh, going so to. <laughs> Going to browse the bookshelf, uh, see what valuable uh, knowledge he could acquire today that he doesn't already have. Uh, Even which though he's already not much. read the books like five bloody times. Exactly. But as the rest, the three of you, what would you like to do on the second day of the sea? You mean like uh, before we do the whole like training room and faith room thing? Um, no, I would say this is, well, 
this is up to Marlin. If Marlin would like to take you guys around, or um, when breakfast is finished, uh, he'll probably look to both of them and be like, "All right, so you ready for the tour, or is there something you got to do beforehand?" No, I believe I'm ready to see the ship. Ready on your orders, Captain. Fantastic. All right. Mark to work, everyone. Xenon will not just hang about, I suppose. And he looks a bit bitter as he says this. And he walks toward the door. And as he gets to uh, the doorway, uh, he'll go, All right, so, well, as you've probably already seen, this is the rec room. It's where uh, you'll find, well, Head for the kitchen and the rack room, and you'll most likely find anybody if they're not elsewhere on the ship doing work. And as you already seen, there's the bathroom, the toilets, etc. And down here, and he'll walk down the hall with both of them. As you know already as well, we have the crew quarters. On this side, we have Charlie and Bellas. And you'll see on the door, probably they have written their names in their own way, I'm imagining. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what does Argus's door look like? You guys are on the other side. I'll describe what huh? Charlie and Bella's are first. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant Charlie's. What does Charlie's door look like? I misread that. You see, Charlie's actually is a little framed up, uh, like, simple painting with letters painted in the middle, Charlie. And then below is a little bit of waves that probably resembles sea, and then a little palm tree going up. And then on the corner, there is a smiley face that is very much out of place. So you guys have a feeling that he was not the one that put that there. <laughs> and on Bella's uh, door, there's um, a little bug sticky note um, that is pure black. And on top in gold, like gold markers, it writes Bella's room. And it's in very perfect cursive. She's a bit of a drama queen. Uh, but uh, it is a nice design. Just She's a bit of a plant nut, so she has these plants inside that room. Uh, so just tell me if you're walking to your rooms, gents. Especially you get it. And you see vines creeping out under the door. Please tell me immediately. Okay. I just don't know if they're gonna grow. I'm suspicious of them. She found them below somewhere in Aurora. There might be plants that the ancient drow grew hundreds of years ago. I, I don't know. I'm just wary of them. Oh. I don't hate plants. Just I'm very aware. But point being, as we already know, here are your rooms. Now I know they're a bit a little bare for now, but come the end of this mission, if you stay on, that is, uh, we'll have a look at getting some furniture. Whether we make it ourselves, you know, it's requisitioned by the resistance, very unlikely, or we acquire, appropriate it. Um, we will get you some that will suit your tastes, relatively speaking. I do want you to, if you do stay on the have oh, a place that you can call your own, a place that you can call home if you're comfortable, relatively speaking, when you're not on duty. It's fair enough. I start looking in at the ground to see if there are any creeping vines. Not yet, thankfully, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, it's a constant plague upon my mind. It's not that bad, it just worries me. Over here, we've got two other empty guest quarters. We can use them for storage at the moment, but on this side, we also have Rachel's room, which is it's usually, it's actually probably the most erratically decorated of all, but um, no, it's uh, just very nice. And, uh, and um, I would say on Argus door, it's a wooden plank with um, Argus ingrained, like carved on top. That's both in Dwarvish and in Common. And uh, on the four corners, it looks like there's like little gears um, mm. that's being like knocked into places as well. I and on that. Rachel's, uh, Rachel's spray painted her door <laughs> um it's a splash of like all sorts of different colors and it you can very much tell that whoever did this doesn't know quite what they're doing with the flash paint but on top it does say rachel 
if you spell out the letters. It's like graffiti. Exactly. Mm. Graffiti. -like and not, I would say not very well done graffiti. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if she knew it was permanent when she first put it on here, but uh, she put it there. So when we write your names in your door, it should be in your own particular flair, of course. Uh, I prefer that, you know, if you're going to write it in a permanent medium, that you do it with care and you know what you don't use spray paint unless you know. Um, ah, you should have seen her afterwards. She was a mess. Um, sir. But that is everybody's quarters. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think now we'll take a trip uh, downstairs. If you, you know, you have already seen my office such as it is. Um, and he'll probably take him downstairs, I think. All right. So, uh, oh, on the right... People right. just put, put, your, put your icons... Oh, where where are they? Uh, okay, that's fair. You guys don't have it. I'll put your icons. <laughs> Thank you. All right, there we go. So, um, on the uh, right, we have uh, the doors which lead, and he'll open the door briefly. So that big locked door there, a pretty secure looking one that leads to the airlock and also the decontamination, and like. He will come up to the door, and uh, he'll open it by, uh, I think this one, is this one? This one's biometric scanner thing, isn't it? Yes. This isn't a yes, car. Yes, it is. Yeah. So he holds his a hand. A very, uh, very secure, heavy, uh, looks like it's heavy guarded door. Oh, wait, we have a picture of it. Hold on. Uh, ah, sorry. I keep forgetting that one of them could be moved. Uh, where is it? Wait, where is the door? Uh, sorry, I don't have it right now, but... Oh, no, that's um... perfectly fine. Uh, actually, it, there's another way to do this, actually. Do you see, do you guys see the door in the, right beneath the... So, I'll do it with the thing. You see this? Yeah. Yes. So, imagine that door, but in dark blues, blacks, and whites. So, looking a little bit more secure. With a similar hmm. scanner on the side. Sorry, go ahead, Darren. No, do you walk in? Uh, yeah, no, he'll he'll open it. He'll put his hand by and it'll scan and then like kind of a heavy, you know, hiss and open, I imagine. Like, it's yeah. pretty heavy. And the two of you, you know, maybe the first time you enter, you were too nervous to really look at it. But the second time, now you're standing right outside the door and you notice the tiles of this room. This airlock room <sighs> is, is, is unbearably different. It's like, no, unbearably different from the rest of the floors that you have seen. Yeah. It's in a very sporadic enter pattern. From this, yeah, we entered from this door, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we entered from there. We came in and there's a bunch of colorful tiles everywhere. And on the other side, there's lockers and decontamination booths. And you watch yeah. Marlin just go, welcome to the airlock room. You might notice that the floor is a bit colorful. We had what you might call a community day. Clementine thought it would be a good bonding experience for the crew. Yeah, like we don't bond enough when we're almost dying out there. And the crew decided that they wanted to decorate the floor. So they did. With fucking gumball tiles or whatever the hell. They did. I don't know what possessed them to use this many bright colored patterns. But I cannot walk in this room without just inwardly cringing. But mm. it is very, it's not my style, but it's a good, it was a good group. And I hate them. I hate them dearly. I would take them down if I could, but uh, yeah, that would They be, are very tacky. They are extremely tacky. Are they not? It's but certainly uh, I catch them. Uh -huh. uh, it's welcome to the celestial spirit. Uh, we'll take your clothes and your aviators. Stare at our floor. I don't know exactly why we had to put it in these colors, but you know what? The point being that it's actually nice because it's tiled. It means any dirt, toxic shit, dangerous hazardous materials that drip actually don't get into the floor. So it, it is useful in a way. Point being, this is the main entrance and exit, as you guys saw before. 
Uh, the lights weren't on before, so it wasn't going to be that glaring, but now you see. Decontamination booths are over there, uh, and that's about it. Um, right next to here, and he'll step out and go to the right. Uh, we'll, and he probably won't open this particular door. And he'll go, uh, this, and this is this one right here, right, darling? Yep. 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 And it's like, this is, uh, what we would call, uh, the... I guess you could call them bay doors, or sometimes can be used as a moon pool, usually, if we're in the water. Uh, there's doors in the bottom of it that open up, uh, and you can, if you're on the ground and we're stabilized, we can take, this is where the cargo would come in. This is where we usually transport cargo from. Um, or we submerge in water, so you swim down underneath, expect the ship, that sort of thing. Uh, it's very helpful. It's got a couple of decontamination booths over there. We'll rarely use this for in and out, as opening the doors does can take a little bit, so normally the airlock is the main entrance and exit of the ship. Uh, now, you probably uh, have already seen this, Lucian, but this is the general storage room. Uh, and he'll enter uh, from this door here into a room which is filled with piles with some boxes, a lot of refrigeration equipment, etc. I bet it was Xenon 1S's idea. I bet it was. I bet he put forth, hey guys, <laughs> do you want to make some colorful tiles? Fuck you, man. Uh, yeah, there'll be some refrigerator units on the side, and they'll be like, all right, this room here is uh, main basic storage. Uh, just where I need to put stuff when we don't have anything else where to catalog it. This giant honking imposing shite of a door. Uh, actually, it's a funny story. This door is actually cyberware made. Uh, which we stole on a raid on a raid once Argus said, you know that door looks a little unstable and then he blew it up he, 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 he blew up its foundation hinges where it was mounted and he said, can we take it with us? And I couldn't say no because he said he'd install it here and install it he did. It's probably one of the more secure doors in the ship. Um, this is where the strong room is. Well, not gonna open it now takes a little while to actually go through the sequence, but behind this is where we store the hazardous material, things we think might explode, or dangerous, unknown, you know, pieces of technology equipment that we're not sure of. Um, and this is the room you are curious about, Lucien. Uh, on the other side here, we have the range and the armory. Uh, and he'll go over to uh, where the armory uh, and gym is over here. Which is, uh, where is it? Yes, it's this one. Over here. Um, and he says, alright, so, uh, this is the range, this is the armory, this is more me while we'll train. There's exercise, a bit, a bit of exercise equipment on the side, as well as some lockers down there with some extra guns or weapons in them. Uh, we've got a few swords here, made some of them. They're not, you know, incredible, but they are sturdy enough and they do last long. Uh, those glowing swords there, sadly, ugh, those are just for decoration. You could swing it at somebody and they would get mildly electrocuted, uh, but it would be like very, very slight. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, this is uh, it's basically everything. We'll uh, show you the med bay after this, but this is uh, pretty much everything. But this is the room that you were curious about, Lucien. We'll be training here. Um, there's a couple targets down there. We can test, test your... Uh, you know, skill and speed with a gun. Do you both have, uh, you both got sidearms, etc.? Um, thank you guys so much for coming. I do have one handgun, yes. Alright, you got a sidearm. You, Lucien. Uh, I do not. Ah, gotcha. Alright, well, we'll set you up with one of them. We'll probably have a basic light arm around here somewhere. Uh, darling, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm imagining the guns on the table and also the swords are just basic long swords and light crossbows, etc. Yes. And maybe we have one or two, like maybe heavy ones, maybe, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right, thank you very much, Nick, for coming, and thank you so much for the raid, man. I really do appreciate it. So, in terms of uh, the armory, that's about it. Uh, we've got some couple of strong boxes here. Uh, this is the range. Obviously, don't go beyond the red barrier. Never, even if there's no one else in the range, don't do it. You might get shot. We don't ever want to risk that happening, but that's the armory. Um, and any questions so far about any everything I've shown you? Any questions you guys have about the ship so far? Um, 
Are we carrying any, like, hazardous or explosive stuff in the strong room right now? <laughs> no. No, not at the moment. Uh, no. It's normally where we would store dangerous materials. It's one of the more fortified places in the ship. If anything did go wrong in there, rest assured, not only with the door, but also the room itself, not allow the rest of the, room, the ship to be compromised. At worst, it would destroy most everything in the room. We would hear it, and we would feel the shockwave, but... Uh, We've tested that strong room before with a couple of minor explosives, and uh, it's pretty strong. It'll rock the ship, so we'll know if anything explodes, but it hope it probably won't compromise the rest. At present, we're not... I don't think we are, darling. We're not hauling any... Am I? No, you're not. Okay, am I hauling any nukes? Thank you. Good to know. <laughs> um, I asked that earlier, and thankfully that answer is no. I was about to say, so actually, you're carrying a hydrogen bomb. Uh... So, back but, here... Although I will say there are some, like, dangerous materials, but not to the point that... Like, so. Not explosive specifically, but yes, there are... Yeah. yeah, he won't tell them that, but yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> like, we're not carrying any explosives at current. Oh, and I forgot this. As he goes back um, by the uh, stairs, this uh, right here is... Uh, oh, we don't have a picture of the guest room. Oh, yeah. It's fine. Sorry. No, it's fine. So this is the guest room. Uh, guest room. This is the guest room. Uh, it can also be considered. It can also be used as a brig or as extra storage. It's got a bed, sink, toilet, all in one. Technically, more amenities than some of the crew quarters, actually, because there's no actual bathrooms there. But um, this is for. We use this to transport a particularly hostile cyberware uh, scientist. What, darling, was it a scientist? Yeah, a scientist. It was a, he was he was very bitey, so we had to we put him in here, and it's a it's just fairly you know strong room, in terms of uh, you know the door is a lot more secure than the crew quarters upstairs for that very reason. Each one of these doors, you know, will have to be accessed by one of these, and he holds up a tiny little card of sorts. Said you'll be issued one of these. Um, I do expect you. Not oh, to I abuse. said I said you did issue them. Oh, I did already. Okay. Really? And you yeah, and yeah. I would say, for you guys, you guys can't open that door. You guys aren't, you, it doesn't allow them to open that door. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Um, nor probably, does it allow them to open the armory? Probably. I mean, there No, are, not armory or the strong room, but you can get into storage. You can get into storage, got it. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Uh, at present, we don't actually work on this door or the armory, but in future... As time goes on, I will give you one that does let you get into practically every place. Um, except the strong room or the engine room. Those are usually the two that are, you know, normally remote access only. And it's only for safety reasons because in both the engine room and the, store, the strong room, there are things that can go, not boom, I almost said explode, not explode. Um, Argus better not make anything explode. Uh, this... Room here is used... Around the same time you hear a big noise. <laughs> Suddenly you hear a giant kaboom. Uh, so <laughs> in this room is mainly just a guest room. It is literally just for that or for a hostile, you know, a person that, you know, for some reason gets in the ship. We have to subdue them or capture them or whatever. It's a brig for all intents and purposes. But I don't think it's a jail cell or a brig. And I don't like calling it that because most brigs don't have toilets and sinks and relatively comfy beds. So it's a five-star brig, if you will. Um, now, this is the bed bay over here. This is a very important place to know where it is. And I'll take you through the stairs to this hallway and to the right. This is where Z91S works. Um, it's important to know this. He is currently can... not present. No, he is upstairs, the lazy bastard. Um, <laughs> so uh, if, you, yeah, if you go in here and you open the door. So the med bay, uh, which is, where is it? Oh, yeah, it's down here. Uh, the door being right there. Uh, yeah, so this is the med bay. Got a couple of beds. Um, the, uh, uh, this machine and he gestures to, um, this, uh, it almost looks like a CAT scan or an MRI right here. This machine right here is for, I'm not actually quite sure how it works, but he, it's for detecting irregularities and bones. It's a scan or an examination machine of sorts. Uh, is the pod full of liquid, darling? Is that for experimentation or like suspension? Plants somebody... specifically. Oh, it's plants. Okay. 
This is his uh, vegetation experimentation <laughs> chamber. He grows like tinctures and uh, potions and stuff like that. I suppose he calls them chemical compounds of this sort. Uh, and also, um, this, uh, you might be wondering, and he'll point to the skeleton, the human skeleton in the corner. Hmm. Uh, and also the scanner on the floor. We got it. This scanner here, and he points to the pad, usually it's for detecting injuries just in general. It's less intensive than that machine back there. And I understand that the skeleton might be unnerving. When you're standing on top of here, the skeleton will be staring right at you. That is by Z9S's design. Z9S's design. He wants you to feel uncomfortable. Don't give in to it. Just don't look at the skeleton. I know it's gaping. I don't know why he has it here. And also, slight disturbing. We don't actually know where he got it. He still hasn't told us. I am got his word that he didn't kill anybody for it. But that doesn't make me any less comfortable. That doesn't make me any more comfortable, rather. So, um, he's pretty harmless, but yeah, this is, he's a bit of a weirdo. We all are, I suppose, on this ship, but yeah. Uh, no, it's probably just a replica. Uh, this is his office, and he'll point in. He won't open it, but he'll point in through the door. Um, and probably only come in here if, you know, there's something, you know, very serious. And uh, if you're wondering where his bed is, it's that pod on the floor. He's like a frickin' vampire. Do I know what vampires are? <laughs> yes. Yes, oh, okay. Oh, right, yeah. He's like a frickin' <laughs> vampire. <laughs> you know, like that vampire, Strahd von Zarevich. Uh, anyway, so um, that's about it. There's one more room, uh, which is the most important, uh, being the Faith Room. And he will show them into the Faith Room. This is probably the most decorated version on the ship. You'll probably notice that this is marble walls, much different than everything else. And the purpose for that is this is to instill, come here for meditation, um, as well as a very important function and purpose of the ship. I don't know if I told you before. I don't believe I did. This ship's fuel is not rush batteries, obviously. We'll be out of business very soon. This ship runs on, and I know it's going to sound very silly and hard to believe at first, but ask your indulgence for that. It runs on distilled faith. Distilled hopes and dreams, literally. The more faith that you're able to concentrate in yourself, and the more belief that you're able to conjure up in your hearts and minds, the more power that we can send to the engine room. And there comes days, I believe every week or so, we have a kind of cycling where everyone goes through and does a little prayer. It doesn't have to be in a specific deity or no, although we do have shrines around here and, you know, looks around to each individual shrine and niche in the ship. These two apparatuses here, and he points to these two things right here, these two little light bulbs. These ones, and he turns up around, you put your hands down like this, sort of can kneel down, you can stand, and you concentrate, and this is how the energy is drawn through, up these pylons on either side and into the engine. It's very and important. I would say, as, as he does that, to demonstrate, you do see the two glowing light pulsate almost and then light up the, in, the entire structure. And then the circle b below the stand also glows up. And then the two columns on the side, uh, you see light traveling, traveling up. Magic powered vessel. Let's put it that much much simpler. So, uh, being of some sort of faith, uh, Lushane, I would like for you to step on uh, to the plate and uh, grab onto both. Try to concentrate, try to meditate. See what your faith, you know, belief aptitude is. And before you do so, I've got something for you. Uh, this took mm. me only a little bit and I wasn't sure of the symbol itself. But I was, I was pretty sure I was on the mark. This is, as far as I could figure, could be used for a holy symbol of Tyr. As I know that the Tyr symbol is scales, a balance scales for justice. And I noticed your holy symbol was, well, a little beat up, a little bruised. And a holy symbol for prayer and also for faith and hope and belief should be more. It should be, well, it should be, it should be something that's, you know, signifies just how much you do believe it. You need to be given the proper kind of focus if you want to maintain like a long connection. And well, if you'd like me to add anything or you want me to even help you teach you how to add anything to it, I'll be welcome. And you'll hand over the focus of 
you know, a kind of emblem or medallion with a silver and gold kind of uh, inlay of a balanced scales. How I'd accurate say, would you say? Lucian, is... you... They are, like, on the edge where you feel like it's not quite uh, what you have. Like, um, like, the scales are not quite the shape that uh, that your original symbols are, but you, you get the feeling that this is not only well crafted, but with like really good uh, meaning inside. Um, but it was no, made it's made with it's, love. Yeah, but no, it is it is not accurate to uh, uh, the actual holy symbol that the actual. You're yeah, to have. I actually looked it up. The actual holy symbol of Tyr actually has a hammer. Uh, in place of the in place of the scales. In fact, I mean, darling, I don't know. You might be using a, a different thing for Tears symbol. Um, you can let me know. Uh, I'm gonna send it in the in the in the character symbol art, object symbol art. Sorry, and you tell me. What do you think? Is that? No, no, yeah, it works. And I would say, probably you like put an extra like line at the end. Like almost like oh, it's a scale holding up, right? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, there, there is. Yeah, there was no hammer in it or even bandana. Yeah, <laughs> it's incomplete. It's not messed up. It's just incomplete. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shame. It's a good craftsmanship. I'll give you that. Although it feels like it's missing something. I had a feeling. I'm not well, very well versed. With the wisdom, uh, sorry, with the justice, God, wisdom, logic domains, um, but uh, we we can do something about that. I can, I uh, yeah, you actually, well, what I'll do later on in the day is I'll I'll modify it a little bit, and uh, you and I can uh, go over it so you can tell me a little bit of things of changes that you know you'd rather have. I can even teach you how to do it yourself to a certain degree. Um, yeah, teaching how to use jewelers' tools to make modifications wouldn't be that difficult. This is already so much. Thank you. Ah, it's. I mean, I didn't get it right, but I thought that it would hope hope rather that it would help. No problem whatsoever. Let's see how you do. I've only ever seen shrines. This is my first time being in front of one. Oh yeah, it feels <laughs> otherworldly. Marlon just does a little, like, look eyebrows up to the corner. And it's just like, hmm, yeah, how about that? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> how about that? Uh, so, uh, you just either stand or you kneel down your choice. You put your hands out, close your eyes, try and concentrate either the deity, something that's really important to you, something that you have great faith or belief in. I kneel down on one leg on top of the pedestal and I put my hands on, was it the two pillars? Yeah, that? the two pillars. The two small little, um, like, the ones with the little bulbs, 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 bulbs yeah. of light, these ones. And I start focusing on the reason I became a judge, the reason why I started to pray. That the story of Tyr, someone that upholded the law and sacrificed almost life and limb, it just resonated with what Lushane had aspired to be. And he focuses on the early years of when he was in the courts, when he believed he was doing what was right. That punishing those that have wronged the law and servicing the people He tries to focus his on the glory days. The light glows um, as you close your eyes, focus and pray, holding, almost gripping onto the, um, the columns. The light is, I would say, a sort of grayish, tinged green light. You don't hear anything from whoever you pray to, which is normal for you, but as stated before, it always comes as a little disappointment. Um, does he have to, sorry, does he have to roll anything for this? 
No, he already did. Oh, this what? Is... Did, sorry, what did he roll? I I didn't see. Twelve. What? No, no. What uh, what ability score? Religion. 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 Gotcha. Yeah, this is in session. Uh, gotcha. He already rolled. Sorry. Yeah. So. But but it glows it glows grayish green and I would say uh, the only time that Marlin you have seen green energy like green lighted energy being drained out is when Vela prayed. Um, hmm. Interesting. How do you feel, she? I feel calm. That's. An effect. Um, by the way, actually, AJ, a way to describe this would be uh, the Take Heart spell from Nino Kuni that Oliver uses. That's actually a very, very good way to make it. Um, normally, uh, I've never, yeah, I haven't seen green unless. So you were praying to tear specifically, or may I ask, or is it too personal? Hoping to tear, hmm. but. Nothing back. Mm. No sign. It'll come as time goes on. It takes practice, just like everything. It's like a muscle that you have to train almost, which is a strange association, but it is true. All right. Gareth, you're on deck. Let's see what you've got. Okay. Uh, just warning you, though. No, I'm not expecting... We didn't really talk about gods in no. my house no deity is required for the faith engine to work. It just requires faith and hope that you have in something. You okay. could even focus on the concept of wild cards you talk to me about if you truly do believe in that. Something that really you have faith in if you take stock in. Apologies if this doesn't end how you want it to. Not necessarily at all. I don't expect this to end in any way. I simply want to see what happens. Gareth reaches out and touches the two, I guess they're like orbs or pedestal things yeah. and focuses and tries as hard as he can to like will anything to come through. What does he think about? He just all he sees is his mother's face. He just wants to. He just wants things to be okay. Mm. So that he can go home and doesn't have to have the world's problems separate them anymore. Religion check, darling? No, I, I already did a religion oh, check. It was. was it was low. I didn't it was, it like, was five. It yeah, was it was five. No, oh, it's in line, but it hurts. Yeah. You. It was more of an introspection rather than praying, because mm. you have never prayed before, and you don't quite grasp the understanding. And as you stand there, feeling these feelings, almost roaring inside of you, but um, the altar doesn't light up. After a moment, you almost, you know, stumble back. Um, you know, the author doesn't reject you, but it was more of a you yourself um, getting worked up by all these thoughts. Like I said, like, I'm sorry. It mm, didn't go the way you wanted it to. I only want you to when you are in this room especially to feel comfortable in yourselves that's all i want i don't want for this to work i don't use my crew as faith sponges it merely happens that this is the way we keep things running and the lights on but it's not an expectation gareth this is if i may were you not able, to, were there just a lot of thoughts, unable to separate one out of the storm of thoughts, so to speak? All I could think about was just how much I want to just be able to go home again. Hmm. 
the faith and hope that it takes to hoping for a change. Hmm. All right. That's just something I wanted to test to see how you would, you know, both of you would react to this and how this would react to you, more importantly. Gareth, if it is ever of any interest to you, you're welcome to come into my office and ask me about any sort of, you know, if you ever have any curiosity about, you know, any deity that sort of relates to your situation or your particular hope or your wish, you let me know. I will not voice this upon you. I'm not some kind of cultish leader. But if you do wish to, um, I'll be happy to help you in that way. Never really thought about it, but... You don't need to if you don't wish, but... <clears throat> I'll give your offer some thought. I appreciate it. And that's all I could ask. Gentlemen, thanks for are you putting yourselves out there. Um, if my calculations are correct, you, Barlow, gave us about... Can I actually... Can Marlin mentally calculate how much that would have given the ship? Yeah, it would be about 30 minutes, which is a lot for, like, only a first time, yeah. to pray. Yeah, yeah. give us about half an hour of power. That's not bad for a first time. Um, so well done. This, by the way, is not a measure... Of, like, yeah, I'm not saying, Gareth, oh, you suck because you didn't. No, absolutely <laughs> not. This is not a measure of how valid your faith is or how powerful your hope is. It's almost a measure of how concentrated it is, like how settled your mind is so you can have a constant stream of it going on. But beyond that, in that room uh, behind the pillars towards your north is the engine room. Uh, Probably in the future, I will actually show it off to you. I'm quite proud of it myself, as is Argus. But for the time being, probably not going to go in there now. There is quite a lot of electricity in the air and a lot of delicate machinery, etc. Well, besides that, that is the entire ship. You've gotten the lay of the land. I can officially now say welcome to the Celestial Spirit, Agent Sparlow and Zenek. You have not go to the top deck. I'm just wanting to let you know. Shit. Is that purposely? Forgot the cockpit. Welcome to Celestial Spirit in approximately five minutes. Um, <laughs> they... <laughs> uh, he says so it anyway. So do you go up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. He says so anyway. you say that. We go up. <laughs> you know, you say that as you go up. The two of you yeah. are probably still calming yourself down from praying and um praying and or trying to pray it's a bit in your thoughts still and about like i would say like two minutes you guys come up to the top deck and it's it's a sunny day outside of the window you see blue skies only passing like really thin clouds and inside you hear different uh beeping noises from different sorts of monitors um and bella in the middle uh currently sitting on the to you guys the right hand side as you come up um sitting in the chair um monitoring whatever that she needs and as as you guys come in, she looks over, gives all of you a curt nod. Um, well, Morning, gentlemen. Bella, how are we looking today? We are looking good, all things considered. We have about a, a bit less than a day of travel to where Micah last pinged us. Fantastic. Which was about three minutes ago. Hmm. It has not moved. Good. Position is static. Well, that's both good and not good, because I can meet these... We're going to take it as a good thing. We're going to take it as a good thing that they're still in the same spot. All right. So... Uh... 
gentlemen, this is the cockpit. This is where most operations on the ship take place. It's where I steer, uh, if need be, you know, submerge, fire weapons, etc. Uh, and it is at this point that, uh, well, if you take a look outside and he'll point in front of the ship uh, where you'll probably see a, um, this thing, this hole, this mast hole, mast mount. It's a mount for the mast. Um, okay. Right here. And he'll go, as you can see, is a, that is not just a pretty decoration. There is meant to be a mast on this ship. Uh, there's meant to be a mast that uh, uses a sail for reasons, um, for the wind, but also for other magical energy purposes. Long and short of it is, this ship is actually, and it is at this point where I must take a bit of shame in saying this, it is not complete. Um, the mast is missing, as well as the emblem in the front, and lastly, the two wings. Yes, this ship used to have the capacity to fly when it was complete. Uh, much like those um, AVs and uh, flying craft that you see Sabor using for both transport and also security. Now, unfortunately, when uh, I, for reasons I'll get into later, the ship passed above the Great Ruin about six years back. And, well, let's just say that that didn't go very well. Um, it interacted with the ship extremely poorly, as the Great Ruin seems to be incredibly toxic to faith magic in practically every way. So the ship parts blasted off for reasons I still don't understand completely. So one of the, the major goals... You, hmm? The two of you would know that um, it is a zone that the district uh, is a land of ruin and bare mountains and valleys. Uh, there's somewhere called the Bleeding Valley in that district where only red rivers run across what is now desert-like uh, um, biome. Imagine that place in Elden Ring, which is just completely... Uh, Ray, you were going to say? Oh, no, I was just... Oh, not the wall, <laughs> but the wall. A masked hole in front of the cockpit, I see. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you see the long, girthy mast fits into in front of the cock... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyway, it's, that, it's around that time. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me, no. It wasn't you, Ray. Who did it? It was Bioku. Sorry, darling. Did you wish to? No. So, <laughs> no, I have nothing to say to you now that you have indulged Bioku's comment. <laughs> No, it's not complete. Um, that's one of the major goals of this crew. Yes, of course, we help the resistance. I'm a resistance operator. But my primary goal is getting this ship back to completed and 100% status, so to speak. So, mm -hmm. so if I understand you right, this ship can actually fly? Used to. When it is complete, it can. With the wings, we might manage short hour-long jumps, flights, yes. So yes, it used to be able to fly. Could fly very well, in fact. Um, it can no longer, but yes. Come us uh, finding two more wings, yes. The ship can fly. With all parts in our possession, it should be able to fly without much trouble at all, with impunity. With two wings and no mast or emblem, we should be able to fly for at least an hour or two at a time. I know. Sounds fantastical, but I did literally just show you a room which generated power based on hopes and faith. Um, but yes, it can fly. We'd have to find two of the wings first. <sighs> the emblem and the mast are almost just as important in different ways. The emblem was for weapon purposes, actually, or rather protection purposes. It can fire various... I have to carefully word my sentence because I know AJ's going to smirk every time I say it can fire blasts in cones. Uh, we had a full thing about this, guys. When we were designing, or when L was designing this this little thing here that Darling, you see zoom now. Zoom out. Zoom out. I did. Um, to see the full, to let, let, just let everyone uh, observe this. Absorb. Glorious... Let them absorb it. Well... 
<laughs> anyway, it's it. not a dick, all right? It is phallic looking, I, uh, sure, but it is not a dick. Your characters would know it looks like a dick from a bird's eye view because you haven't <laughs> seen it from that far away. Bioku, thank you for the hundred shrimp. Yes, Bio jumbo shrimp. Thank you for the hundred bits, Bioku. God darn it. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> fuck me. Um, don't even think about making a joke about that, darling. <laughs> so as, like, he looks out of the window. He says, "The emblem, which is meant to fit on the very front of the ship, in fact." No, we'll go out there now. It's a nice day. Uh, Bella, how fast are we traveling? Will we be ripped off of the deck? She would, like, look sick. No, if you grip tightly on the rails, be careful. All right, hold on. The FJS has some competition. God darn it. It's a dick measuring contest, but for ships. Um, all right. All right, gentlemen. Hold on very tightly. Uh, and he's going to crack... The door open, um, which is the same as like down on the below deck, and he slides a card through, and he forces the door open as what when I imagine is wind rushing by. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so and we, it's 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 a bit hard walking in the deck, but like if you grip on tight, it's it's all yeah. right. So if you look here, you'll see the mast mount is normally supposed to, as I said, have a mast in it here and beyond there. We're probably not going to go all the way up. But if you look in the front, you'll see... Half of half of his words are lost in the wind, too, yeah. guys, I will say. See? Emblem mount supposed to go, etc. Um, the emblem what? Is, the emblem up there, <laughs> that's where it's supposed to be. At the very tip of the ship is where the emblem is supposed to be mounted. The rest of the deck is mainly, well, just storage. Let's go back inside. Can't really hear you. The nope. tip of what is yeah. mounted? <sighs> Fuck me. <laughs> go, we go back inside. No, no, sorry. <laughs> At the tip. God darn it. At the tip of the ship. <laughs> At the tip of the long, feisty jumbo shrimp. At the tip of the ship is where the emblem is supposed to be. God darn it, Ray. It's supposed to be mounted. Um. <laughs> It's supposed to be mounted normally. Uh, I just realized I said mounted twice. Uh, at the tip of the ship is normally where the emblem is supposed to be. It um, attaches to the front of the ship uh, and basically it adds to the ship's defensive capabilities as well as its offensive. It can generate a much stronger shield than we normally can now. We kind of can. You probably noticed in the very beginning that this ship was camouflaged on the outside. Right? You notice it looked more like that's the Camouflage, it can be turned into a shield, a not very strong one, but one to be able to escape some situations, it can be helpful. With the emblem, that shield is actually something to, is not rather something to sniff at, um, and it's pretty strong, as well as um, a fair amount of projectiles that can be launched from it. It's like a focusing ray. It's, it looks exactly, Lucien, like the focus or the holy symbol that you have or the one I gave you. Where it focuses magic in a much tighter stream um, of, you know, a tighter stream of projection, so to speak. It's like the difference between firing a shotgun and the difference between firing a, like, sniper rifle. So, right now, we're at, you know, pretty... If we try to fire now, we might get somebody in, you know, close radius. But after getting the emblem back, the ship will actually be a relative threat. At the moment, we're pretty good on the defense. The armor is pretty strong, but we have practically no offense. Um, the mast would help with uh, energy efficiency. I'm blabbing. The point being is the ship is broken. There's a lot of parts missing, and I'm trying to get them back very heartily as well because I want this ship to be fully operational again. It will be of much greater help to the Resistance and also to me if it is so. That's our main mission. Oh, I'm sorry. Went off a bit there, but it's a. Uh, I had a great pride in having designed this ship. I was hoping that it would stay put together for a little longer, but it's all right. It does sound like it's quite capable when it has all of its pieces together. That would be a sight to behold, I think. It mm. would. It would be very helpful in taking down cyberware, and you know, really turning the tides, or at least it would be 
a boon of sorts. So that is one of my primary objectives. But even as it is now, I'm still, you know, it's pretty, it's nothing to sniff at, and, you know, relatively nice place to be. But that's the entire tour of the ship. Welcome again to the Celestial Spirit, and I hope you do enjoy your time being part of the crew, and I hope you're all crew, crew members, as far as I can see. Damn it, age fires in spurts for now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Why do you have to make it sound like we are upgrading it to be a better dick than it already is? Because that's exactly what it is. I know! <laughs> it's okay, guys. You know, like, it's late at night. We don't have a lot of people around. It's, uh, yeah, no, this is a private Darling, session. what happens now? Talk, please. <laughs> and around this time, I would say it's, like, late. It's late noon already. Uh, taking a bit of walk is. Uh, yeah, but it t took you guys some time, especially with praying and just uh, like looking around in the armory. Um, Charlie probably was kind enough to not ring a bell for lunch this time, figuring that you guys needed more time. You're busy. But yeah, he knew. Um, but when you did pass the hallway, you did, uh, you, you, like, you do remember him saying that he left out some, uh, extra of that good, good fish stew for you guys. The good, um, good. <laughs> the good, good fish yeah. stew. Exactly. Fish stew for you guys. Fish. Um, fish. So, um. You have a, you, all of you have about, um, the afternoon and the night to do the rest of your activities before, um... Day number three. Before the... Th yeah, before day number three, where we you... Which you will be, like, catching up to the... Do we arrive in the morning? Yes, you arrive... Remember, you approach the storm at the morning? Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, what would you guys do in the afternoon and night? Question mark. Uh, I think... Gareth would probably just uh, walk back upstairs to the cockpit, and if he's if they don't chase him off, he'd just stare out the window for a while and watch the ocean go by and stuff. How would Bella react to that? You would be watching the clouds and the sky under a pair of watchful eyes, is the way I would say it. Uh, Bella's a quiet person in general, and she knows not to disturb someone when they're having their moment. Although she is doubtful for, of you, she does not disturb you and, um, you know, only observes from afar. She has her manners when she wants to practice them, is oh, how I would describe it. <laughs> What about you, Lucian? Lucian's gonna talk to Marlin. Alright. Uh, Captain, I'm aware that we're on a mission to fetch someone. Will we happen to know why we're fetching them from this location? Ah, that's a very good question. Uh, sadly... Barlow, I've actually got limited information on that myself, which is a bit disconcerting. What I can tell you is that, well, what happened was apparently a mission I did previously with my crew, the one where Rachel got hurt, was a setup for this one, a distraction, if you will. Uh, this mission was a infiltration mission to Cloud Nine. I assume you know where that is. Definitely so. Mm. More advanced technology of cyberware, as well as the highest body of ruling outside of Bedonia. And Harvey Killian's home, as well. Very dangerous mission. And as far as I know, I'm imagining that all the members, save for the one we're rescuing, are either captured or dead, regrettably. 
Which is strange because my friend, Micah, who survived, who was on that mission, is not a fighter. Uh, I think you've heard me mention before, they are a scientist. The nurse. a few questions. A little bit. Except for one question that is answered. Why they took her. They took them specifically because they were looking for something that was related to... Do I know they were, was related to Rush Batteries? Uh... Do, do, do they notice, uh, do you know, know that they're related to... Do I know that the mission was related to finding out the nature of Rush Batteries? Uh, no. I don't know. Oh, wait, oh, wait, you do, because Micah wrote to you in Micah private, told me, but exactly. You're not, yeah, but you're not supposed to know. Is... I'm not supposed to, yes. So I'm going to tell him, uh, because because three musketeers and bros got a bond, not bondage, mm -hmm. bond, it's very different. <laughs> Just two bros chilling, bonding each other, you know? it's Five feet apart because we're not gay. Exactly. <laughs> so after <laughs> considering for a second, he's going to go forward and go, the reason that Micah was taken, specifically, I don't know why else. I can only imagine this be a certain reason. Barlow, I'm going to trust you with a bit of information here that I'm myself not supposed to know, but I reserve my right to tell my crew what I damn well want to, so I would like you, if you could, to keep this under wraps, if that's all right. You have my vow not to tell anyone. Mm, I'll hold you to that, and I imagine it's a very good one. Micah was a scientist who was specifically studying linguistics. And they were most likely taken up because they were going to discover, hopefully find out more information about the nature of rush batteries. Rush batteries are mysteriously made, only known manufacturing processes by cyberware, and if the resistance can crack the code, it could be a very useful tool. Micah knows a lot about magical runic language and technological energy fluctuation, that sort of thing. So them taking the, the resistance sending them up there makes sense in that regard that it might have been something to do with the brush batteries are by the way I, oh actually i don't know if you do know this you probably you might you probably don't uh do you know how rush batteries work would i know how rush batteries work um no you would not uh, you you would this. just ke you would just keep it uh you kn you think they're like regular batteries that like store just whatever like Are exactly they a they're kind of battery that accelerates charge exactly uh and that's oh, shit I'm right oh well kind of actually because all that they're known to do is yeah kind of they are known to make a uh, charge, which actually, you know what, follow me. I'm imagining this was in his quarters or at his office. I'm just imagining that's where yeah. this interaction was at, okay. Yeah. Follow me. Uh, and he's going uh, to uh, take him over to the side of the desk where like a small crystal is laying, right? Yeah. And he's gonna say, all right, so imagine that this, which is a bit of like, I'm gonna say unre probably unrefined moonstone. It's probably like very, very dull and not, it's not yeah. concentrated, right? Mm -hmm. It's decorative. And it's like, so, rush batteries themselves are uh, just, you know, imagine this crystal inside of a casing. That's basically what a rush battery is. Very small. Which comes to a surprise to you, I would say, uh, Lucian. Because uh, for all intents and purposes, you thought they're pure metal. Yeah. Most people don't know rush batteries are, in fact made from two types. It's not just scientifically accelerated storage or batteries. There is a crystal inside that helps with that kind of storage. And the process is actually not scientific by which it stores energy. It's actually magical, which is sadistically hypocritical, if you ask me, considering the view that they have on magic. Um, they actually use crystal inside and it is, they are magical. That much I and the Resistance know, but we don't know how they work. That, I imagine, or from what Micah told me, the small little note they left me, is why they went up. So it's a very important mission, a lot of stake in it. They're going to find out how they work, why there is magic involved. Because Rush Batteries being the most you know, important export of Cyberware's entire line, 
not many people know that rice patties are actually magical quotations in nature. But the question is, you know, how do they work? And I, you probably don't know this. I, well, actually, maybe you do. Have you ever heard of anyone trying to crack open one of these? Or well, one of these, he means like, well, like a rice battery before, crack one open. Have you ever heard about what happens? All I know is that you don't want to see what's inside. Uh -huh. Could be potentially dangerous liquid. It is to most people uh, because they become liquid. If you try and crack open a rush battery, they explode. But not for the reason you think. Uh, through extensive tinkering with Rachel, uh, she actually was building a kind of uh, bike, kind of um, hover bike vehicle of sorts. Very cool, very cool. Uh, she still works on even today. And uh, we built a kind of, I would say, a kind of hybrid Faith Rush battery engine of sorts for her. We were, we were messing around. And I took a closer look at the Rush battery, and I found a very interesting little mark, which turned out to be, this is going to get a little bit esoteric and weird. So, magic, which I imagine you have a working understanding of being in the position you were, Lucien. Magic can be stored in various places. One of the ways it can be stored is written languages, which are called runes. And they normally look a bit like this. And he'll, like, draw on the desk, like, you know, probably in, like, a brief glowing line, and then it'll probably fade. It looks a bit like, you know, a little bit like this. You know, some kind of weird symbol, right? Normally they're written in chains or lines. A bit like computer code, if you will. I'm not too familiar with computers myself, but I have seen these runes before. They hold some sort of significance. You've seen runes like this before? I've dabbled in a few. I've presided over a few cases where I've had to look over evidence regarding runes and magic. Mages, what you would call witches, or in fact, in that point, what you would call witches. Interesting. All right. Fascinating. All right, so those kinds of runes. There was a particular kind of rune on the inside of the rush battery that I could sense when I was looking at it and trying to detect sort of magical energies. And the magic indicated it was some kind of explosive or protective rune. I imagine that's what's making the batteries explode if someone tries to crack them open and not the actual uh, core inside, which means that they're a failsafe against anyone trying to discover their true meaning. Hence why Micah went with the team to Cloudline to try to find out the nature of these batteries specifically, which is a huge undertaking and would be a massive boon to the Resistance if they could do it. Micah's the only one who survived, which hopes they're alive. I hope they're alive. And hope, I hope very much that they found something of, you know, great knowledge or value in Cloud9. But all their team is dead. We're going to rescue them, hopefully alive and hope that they did find something of great value to have necessitated such a <coughs> such a loss. Um, but that is the reason for Micah's mission, as far as I know. Um, I could have kept it from you, especially because you are a newer agent in addition to the group, but I've been had information kept from me recently, and it hasn't gone well, so I refuse to do the same with somebody else who is going to be someone i got to trust. I appreciate that confidence in my ability and me as a person, Captain. Transparency is everything, especially on this ship. So. I couldn't I, agree more. I would appreciate if you did, you know, keep this knowledge to yourself unless asked. It's not omitting if no one actually asks you about it, but the point being is that. I don't know how much of this is exactly correct, and Micah might be able to shed light on it when we get back. But, I will say right now, I'm very worried about Micah's well-being. But I am also very intrigued to see if they have found anything on this, because Cyberware is using magic in order to literally charge society to... They peddle magic to society while actively smashing it down from a legal perspective, something you understand only all too well. Uh, it's not just hypocrisy, it's disturbing. It's like, how does a person rationalize that kind of thing in their mind? You know, how does a person like Harvey Killian rationalize that sort of thinking? They're not just bigots. You know, now I'm truly, you know, afraid they're actually insane, the higher ups of 
Subware's leadership. An explosive seal so they can get rid of the evidence of what's inside. Hmm. Hmm. I've been working myself recently on trying to replicate the rush battery process, but it's difficult without being able to know the schematics. So, what we'll do is pick up Micah and try to see if there's anything they've recovered that is of value, and hopefully they won't be hurt. Not the mission now. Here's to hoping this mission bears fruit. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. If you ever have the desire just to brush up, I don't know how potentially, I mean, we're going below cloud nine. I don't know how potentially dangerous it'll be. If you wish to practice either your sword arm or your gun arm, and I would recommend the latter especially, down in the gun range, please do feel free. Uh, if you want to get in there, you can ask any one of the crew to let you in, but there's a small intercom by the door, which you can press, and I'll give you access. Understood. All right. Well, Barlow, as you were, and uh, try the faith room again today if you can. Don't even have to fully commit to the process, but just for the sake of meditation to try to home in on it. It might be a good idea. Just because, well, any sort of faith magic is useful, and I don't just mean for the ship, I mean in general. It can be used for healing, inspiring, protection, all those good things. Yeah, I could swing by there in a minute, clear my mind. Meditation is good for you. Now I leave the office. Mm -hmm. All right. So the afternoon passes, I would say, rather peacefully. Uh, Gareth, you probably spend a good chunk of the afternoon, you know, just being in the cockpit, um, looking out, trying to still, you know, grapple with the fact that you're now a part of a team. Um, but, you know, still definitely missing home is only about a bit less than like two weeks um memories resurface when when things are quiet is how i would say it um you try to chase them away but at times you at times like this you definitely have to face them alone and lucian you gathered quite amount of valuable information um trying to decide how you feel about that to learn that the fact that you being a judge against magic and magic practitioners and learning that cyber the word. very thing the very core thing that cyber word is known for is in fact magically uh magic at core About, you know, an hour as like before you guys, um, about an hour, you all stay in your room, I would say, uh, you know, just trying to relax. Uh, when you hear Charlie's piano chimes come in and it's around like, I would say 6, 15 dinner time. Dinner time. Dinner time, Dinner time, boys. Um, please gather in the dining room. I'll meet you all there in a few minutes. It is fish stew tonight. Um, Just and orange. Marlin over the internet. Oh! <laughs> Does Marlin do that like across the ship? Or? Actually, you know what? <laughs> no, it's fish stew. Just really quietly. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> so, yeah, Lucian and Gareth, you, all, you both hear that in your room. I reserve my right to abuse the intercom <laughs> system when I damn well please. <laughs> just like really early in the morning, morning you know, it's just like... <laughs> 
You're all going to hell. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, not often, only semi often. And Gareth, as you walk past the hallway, you see a very grumpy Bella um, coming downstairs. No, exactly. That is exactly <laughs> the face that Bella is making. I try to kind of sheepishly wave hi. <laughs> hi, how's it going? <laughs> she like actually raises a brow at you as in the sense in the like you know, in the tone of like Did you not read the room? Right. Okay. I understand. Aw. <laughs> Carry on board. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! This girl's a girl boss or a dog. Yeah, boss. Gareth is definitely intimidated by her. <laughs> I I just see Dommy Mummy written on the wall. Right now. That's yeah, all so, I see. So no no, she crosses her arm and leans against the hallway, like watching you as you walk past, almost like way too fast down the hallway into the rec room. Mm. Uh, and I would say Marlin, you Marlin, you see. The guy just zoomed past in huh? as Lucian, like, s like, sat down, like, you know, almost probably also a bit confused as, like, what's ha what happened. What's and around And around this time, you see Bella, like, <laughs> slowly walking over. What's the rush? <laughs> you alright, lad? I'm just, uh, in a hurry to get to dinner. <laughs> Eat more fish! Yay! That's gotta be a deception <laughs> check! Yeah! That's a deception check. Are Again, you lying, uh, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider that a fib? <laughs> what was it? Oh shit! Is that a natural oh, 20? <laughs> you know, was that a natural fucking Yeah, it was a nat 20! <laughs> For the most obvious lie in the world. Wow. Okay, darling, you describe this. Uh, that was an 18 for my insight. Describe this. Yeah, so. Impressive. You see, you see Gareth, like, very, very quickly, like, almost like taking over the, like, spoon and, like, start scooping things in. And then looking actually very eager to eat the fish stew. And, like, you know, with the action and, like, just him barely making on eye contact with everyone else. And you just get the sense of, maybe, you know, maybe he's just very hungry at the moment. Um, but, you know, Marlon, you do see Bella, like, smirking on the, like, not quite, you know, like, fully, like, a full blue smirk, but, like, almost like a tip. Of the uh, like on her lips. Right. So, so, my, so my insight check gets her reaction better than it yeah. does his for real. Yeah, exactly. Real. Exactly. He doesn't know. But you know, you get the sense that he is just super hungry. He, he yeah, he doesn't. Marlon doesn't know quite what's going on, but he does look over and he's just like, "All right, well, bon appetit, everyone." Charlie looks like somebody's real hungry. I'm Gal. I'm glad. Oh, I guess someone really well, likes that fish too. So that's this is now your uh, fourth time having the same fish. I'm partial to chicken more myself, but you know what? Maybe we can get one as time goes on. Um, oh, are there burgers? Are burgers a canonical thing in this universe? Absolutely. I would love a damn good burger myself. So you know what? We'll. I'll keep that in mind as, as time goes on. Oh, we can raid a Mc a Mc a McWearbins. Uh, what are the fucking McDonald's called? It? There must be a McDonald's equivalent. Cyberbros. Cyber. Cyberbergs. No, Cyberbros. 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 I love burgers. But welcome, do. welcome to Cyber Bros. <laughs> we offer the best service not even, and the best patty. Not even Sebergs, Cyber Bros. All right. Can I get you a bro burger? A bro burger? <laughs> a super jumbo uh, bro burger shrimp. Uh, anyway, a bro shake. A bro shake. 
<laughs> Rosham bro shake. All right. Uh, yeah, he eats. We eat. We eat our fucking fish stew. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys feel? Fourth time around with the fish stew. Me? Fourth and time Marlin. around. Them only second time, no. right? No, them fourth time around. Remember? No, because we had it for dinner and we oh, had it for God, breakfast, man, lunch, yeah, and dinner. How are you guys dinner. feeling? That's a good point. Uh, I mean, it's good, but... I already you, hate this. Can't you, like, change the recipe a little? You know what? We can probably change up the seasoning as time goes on. We can make sandwiches. We can make sandwiches. That's possible. Uh, yeah. We can make sandwiches. Well, well, Captain, I, I, um, I hate to tell you this, but we, we didn't did not run out of bread. Of Don't you dare tell me, Charlie, we ran out of bread. Uh, How is that even well, possible? Uh, we, we do have some noodles left. Um... And some pastas. Alright, uh, we'll but... make fish pasta. We'll make fish pasta. And like, pasta. as you say that, like, even Zena want to ask cringes a little bit. Yeah, I understand. You know what? You know what? We should make a big stink about this when we get back. In fact, I will be. Um, we should go, we should do, we should open a, a fish stew protest, so to speak, in front of <laughs> Calvary's office until she gives us the bloody burgers we deserve. Um... All right, well, we'll have a kind of, we'll have a noodle dish of sorts, maybe a noodle dish stew of sorts with some kind of seasonings. Maybe we'll use some fruits or whatnot. We'll make hot pot. <laughs> a fish scampi would be nice. Oh, that's not a bad idea. All right. Maybe Charlie, you and, <laughs> you and Barlow can work, work in the kitchen. You and Lou can work and see if you can come up with any new, <laughs> new concoction. I certainly wouldn't oppose that. You yeah. saying you're always... Welcome hmm. in the kitchen. Um, it could be a bit dirty, but I try to make it walk. So you all have your fish stew and have your orange. Um, the crew kind of hangs out for a little bit, only like about 10 minutes or so after their meal, just to talk and catch up. Um, you see Bella whispering something with Xena1s, which actually managed to crack a laugh out of Xena1s, but uh, none of you really get what they're saying. But I would say both, most of you probably don't even want to know what they're saying. Um, especially you, Gareth. <laughs> you, Gareth, probably stay in the corner as far away as like possible from Bella. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> since both of you aren't specifically assigned to any job at the moment, um, as the rest of them retreat back to where they are assigned, um, in the room leaves both you, Gareth, Lucian, and Marlon once again at night. You hear washing sound, a bit of tink uh, tinkering, uh, you know, pots clinging, from the kitchen where Ch Charlie, tinkling. you know, it's hot. Not, yeah, not yeah, tinkering. Tinkling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Charlie's um, making new pots, <laughs> chum, chum, chum. <laughs> smashing uh, them together and welding them into place. You hear humming from Charlie, actually a, a, a sea shanty of sorts, ah. um, murdering, but it goes on and murmuring, off. not murdering. <laughs> Mur murder, no, murdering. Murdering, mm, yes. <laughs> you know when you whistle and you just casually kill a bitch with your sick uh, tunes? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So. anyway, so yeah. We're left the alone. The night, mm. yes. Marlon is gonna go over in the chair and he's gonna, he's gonna listen to some, some music. All right, what kind of music? Uh, Punk rock. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> the ship begins to shake. Uh, no, uh, he will. No, he'll listen. No, he'll listen to some jazz. He has some. He has good space. Good, good space. Right. No, he has good. Good, uh, good, good. Uh, are we allowed to play? Probably not. Oh, I would play Cowboy Bebop other, otherwise. Oh, but I would love that. In mm. the meantime, envision. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba 
It's too copyrighted. No, uh, well, 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 right, let me try to find one. Let me try to find one that works. Hold on. No, not that one. Hold on. <laughs> I'll find one, damn it. There will be uh, one. In the meantime, you know, <laughs> you guys probably hear this, like, Marlon's just trying to change in, in and out. Uh, <laughs> what about the through the elevator guys? music channel. Yeah, uh, the two of you, what do you guys do? I'm just... Gareth is just kind of reclining, his head leaned all the way back. I... It's only been the second day, and I already don't know how much longer I can keep eating fish for every single meal. <laughs> They're both used to much higher price or living, and it's like, whoa. Well, Charlie did say that he's willing to help. Uh, he's willing to let me help out and maybe make a few tweaks here and there. Could probably change up the menu. Do it. Oh boy. You know, and I would say, you know, as you say that, you do hear Charlie, like, responding to you guys in a very positive and hopeful tone. As in, yes, I do hope that we can change out a little bit. Because, as a matter of fact, it's that Charlie is also super tired of the fish suit. <laughs> I'm sure he is. It. He certainly is super tired of it. I'm sure he is. As we all are. So, um, what do you guys do for the majority, like the majority chunk of the time? Trying to so. find a decent music station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the, like as as you guys converse, you Lucian and Gareth, you just keep. There's just this in the background. <laughs> Like, you need a little help there, Captain? He's trying his... What? I look around... Wait, are you playing this in your office and it's going through the... No, uh, no! Audio See system? the music chair? See where he is okay, on the map? I, okay, I was hoping it was the music chair. Otherwise, I would have been like... Where no, is that No, no, no. It's not that... He's not blasting it through the speakers. He's not doing this. <laughs> Say, Captain... Uh, just how much longer do we have until we get to where we're going? Huh? Oh, uh, we'll probably be there at tomorrow morning, so we'll be waking up early, and then, uh, we'll most likely be around the area underneath Cloud Nine. We'll need to be ready, as there are storms and such up there. Oh, storms. Oh, joy. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, just getting over this being uh, seasick. Seasickness will be... Uh, not so bad. We will probably descend once we get there. Uh, the ship does, thankfully still, uh, have, a, I guess you could call it a submarine mode. Uh, since it's airtight, um, very much so, uh, we can submerge for a good bit. Um, harder to move, but we can still submerge, which will get us out of the storm's path a lot, which is good. Um, also, my A little bit, no. <laughs> Uh, s strangely, Micah's signal is apparently coming from much farther below the waves. So, well, I mean, I'm not surprised because it's stormy, so... We're just gonna hope that they've found some kind of underwater cave or something like that that we have got to rescue them from, uh, and that they are still, in fact, alive. I it's a thin hope, but at the very least, I do want to recover their body. But I'm hoping that they are Take still alive. he's not wrong. If the signal's stationary, at least we can rule out that the waves didn't carry them. That, and also the signal keeps beeping, indicating that its occupant or its tied to thing is still alive. Am I right about this? I'm just talking out of my ass. Yes, yes, you are correct. Yeah. If, yes, if you it are stops talking beeping, out of your ass. either means that it got ripped out of them, yeah. or the uh, or the person that they're attached to are dead. Right. And which means that this. Micah is both still attached to their... Um, and still alive. Yeah, and still alive. Yeah. So we, I'm pretty sure they're still alive. Uh, don't know why they haven't moved or how they've been able to survive down the bottom of the ocean, but we're going to go get them, bring them back, and hopefully they should uh, recover soon. I do not want to lose another friend, so uh, you do keep yourself safe as well. 
Hey, Agent Sinek, do you play Dragon Chess? Dragon Chess? Actually, Ooh, no. That's an old one. How do you play it? Well, he set up the pieces like so. Do you have this... one on you? Wait, does Lucian just have a set? I have a dragon think... chess set. Yeah. He yeah. has it on him. That's so freaking cool. I'm sorry yeah. to Yeah, it's, it's, it's a small pocket-sized dragon oh, chess set. Oh, I love that. I've got playing it. cards. He's got travel chess. <laughs> we so got we the board be... games, boys. We, we won't survive. be bored for a while. <laughs> All right, so this is what these pieces do. This one moves forward. That one only moves diagonal. This part, this piece right here, you want to protect this piece at all costs. Okay, that's easy enough to understand. All right. I uh, move center. All right, and uh, mm. I guess I will move this piece up center to meet yours. Uh, move this one diagonal. Both right. you roll a check for that? I was about to say, uh, they're playing this yeah. whole thing in their head. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> I should <laughs> hope somebody tells us to just... Moving it to E5 and then to C7, over. you know? <laughs> what attack roll? I was waiting for what you guys to like, stop, stop roll. I hit the board. <laughs> So, uh, um, what are we rolling? Like, uh, are we rolling? intelligence. Intelligence, um, okay. Intelligence and Lucian, you probably have, uh, sorry, Lucian, you have probably have, uh, yes, yes, you do. You have proficiency, so you add your proficiency bonus to the roll. Okay, so that's a nine plus three. Oh, okay, so, you so, just right, edged right. me out. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bad. <laughs> you play? You just what now? And no. no, but it's it seems like a I get the gist of it, and from there I can kind of figure out I'm slowly figuring out what I need to do and as I go along. You are I would say you saying you are probably both a bit distracted trying to teach and also not trying to, you know, really one up the other to not to be you know, be He's polite. Back. And at the same time I would say the constant shifting with that. of the constant shifting of the music in the back as okay. Marlon is He's like trying, okay? Is it's not like doing a good thing on your mental like chess mindset. <laughs> but you uh and Gareth you catch up pretty quickly, but you are still new, so the strategies do escape you. Um you guys mess around for like about 30 minutes on the chessboard. And I would say uh, it was a close draw. Um, but Lucien, you do end up checkmating uh, Gareth. And that's mate. Damn. Oh, goodness, you had me on the ropes there. Well, well played, sir. <laughs> well played, indeed. I like this, about this dragon about this chest. Time... Oh. oh, go ahead. No, no, carry on, carry on. Uh, I like this dragon chest. I'm figuring it out very quickly. <laughs> Starting to see where I made some, well, in retrospect, very obvious mistakes. Let a few too many of my pieces get taken. Sometimes we can get a little distracted by what's ahead of us. That's we're blind to something else. Deep. <laughs> this is Marlon just like coming up and just going. <laughs> and I will say around this time, Marlon finally have settled on a certain particular piece. Which and is funny because now... this is the best one I found. <laughs> yeah. And finally, you know, like sat down, like actually sat down and begin to listen. And it's it. This is like well half an hour into the complex. Like, it's into fine. The, the it just time. took a while. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, is the chest set in uh, 
uh, Marlin's quarters. Is that dragon chess or just regular yes, chess? Yes, that is dragon chess. Okay. Good. You... Somebody was going to say something. But I don't know mm. who's going to say. No, I was, I was good. <laughs> well, I finally found a music piece. Um, I don't know. You know, it's, it's relatively good background. Uh, not bad. Especially for your first time, apparently. Um, Lucien, you were pretty proficient in dragon chess. Garen is set around with you. Go right ahead. I'll set up the board. Oh, no, I was asking if you played dragon chess a lot or were proficient in it. Oh. Well, when I was still studying, I used to play in a club. Picked up the hobby. And it was, it was pretty fun. Nice. Developing strategy, meeting new friends. That's true. Dragon Chess has quite a lot of strategy too. I would actually, if I'm not, you know, still in your space, Gareth, I would actually like to take a go if that's all right. Oh, very much so. Go right ahead. At some point, if you two do want to play a bit of chess like this as well, um, I've also got a set, probably so, it on the left in my office is rarely ever used. I started one with Rachel a while back, and it's still unfinished, but I can save the pieces spots. Um, all right. uh, for for your purpose, uh, Marlon, Rachel does not how to play chess. Um, uh, the way that she plays is for you is like not only sacrilegious, but also just like a pure mess. Oh yeah, she does the gremlin thing where it's just yeah. like, my pawn eats your knight. Uh, okay. It eats your horsey. <laughs> and then I take your castle. Exactly. All right. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Right. So, Lucien and I play. What, what we, oh, is it just straight intelligence? Uh, straight intelligence and Lucien again at your proficiency bonus. Okie dokie. I have been getting dog shit rolls for this. <laughs> Jesus! Is that what? That's a. Wow. Okay. That's an eight total. Damn. All right. That's a seven! Wait, no, no, no. Hold on a second, Luce. No, that's a five total. Oh, no, that is an eight total. You beat me by one, just like a carrot! <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely. Incredible. We don't know what we're doing. We're no, just no. having Actually, fun. I want you guys, I want you guys to describe. How do you play this out? Okay. How did you play this Marlon out? Marlon sets up his defense and it's just, okay, I'm going to do the old mirror technique. This is going to mirror everything Lucien does. Unfortunately, Lucien is not playing at his best right now, so he ends up making the same mistake. I'm opening up with going from the pieces on the side right. and just moving them forward. Not even going to the center, just, no, just from the outside. The, yeah, so we both do this. And Marlon's like, well, now I've kind of trapped myself here. Um, I'm going to use the center piece. Oh, shit, my queen's gone. All right, well, maybe if I... Okay, there goes my knight. This is not going well. Um, and he basically, just, it's like the, um, yeah, there goes my cleric. <laughs> Damn it. I needed that wizard. Uh, as time goes on, it's sort of like in uh, a brief history of the world, I guess, where it's just like, they tried to do a lot of crusades, some of which almost didn't fail. And it's like little crosses going bonk, 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 bonk. That's his strategy right now. He's just going, uh, uh, throw more, throw more. When everyone is shit and we're just shit and shit here. <laughs> yeah. Eventually he loses. Okay, Gareth, Gareth, you're almost like a bit confused. Yeah. You thought you understood the game, but yeah. as you like look on the side, it's like, Mar I actually don't know. Mar Mar will look at the side, it's like, this is not me at my best game. I swear, I swear to Sky, I'm normally better than this a little bit, at least. That's what he said. <laughs> Eventually, he gets to the point where he's just like, "All right, I concede. It's definitely match." Um, and at this point, well, I've only got a king and two pawns, so I'm pretty sure you won. You have four pawns <laughs> and one king. <laughs> Lu Shane is just sweating bullets. So, <laughs> takes takes out napkin, dabs forehead, puts back. That was a rough match. All right, we're going to collectively practice this, so we're all going to get collectively better because this is important. Because <laughs> this is not exciting. I feel like we should be better at this. I don't know why. It's just this 
It's just this feeling. Uh, if we're on a mission that involves strategy, I think we exactly, do need a brush. Exactly, up. we need better practice. With it. That's what they're good. <laughs> they don't get any you sleep. Know, they around, stay up all night. <laughs> around this time, I think Charlie actually comes out and pokes out a head and says, "You know, boys, I'm sure it was the fish stew. I, I took." I take Charlie, don't you dare blame yourself for this. <laughs> it's not the face to. This is my incompetent nightly butterfinger. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed, and I'm definitely not going to practice chess against myself for an hour before I do so. <laughs> All right, you gentlemen, have a great night. Relatively rest of the night tomorrow. We work. Uh, Going to be a lot more formal, a lot more strict, and uh, yeah, we'll see how you do in the field. Good luck for that. All right, have well, a good night, Charlie, and Gareth, and you too, Lou. So do you go back and uh, sit in front of that dragon chest? Mm, uh, we'll get to that after they're done describing this. Uh, All right, trash. so Jeez. the rest of you, as Marlon leaves, what do you guys do? Uh, oh, wait, the music should be off. He, he, <laughs> no, he, left, he left it on, actually, no. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, Gareth will be like, oh, well. I guess I will get to bed, have an early night, so I can get up early. And he'll stand up. That game is pretty interesting, though. I will have to learn more about it so that I can... Because it would be useful to know more about, like, tactical ability. And then he's going to just basically slink off to bed. <laughs> After that, I'm always up for a rematch, and thank you. Thank you for playing. And he's just going to wave his fingers as he walks away. I'm putting <laughs> away the pieces, thinking, holy shit, how did I win those two games? <laughs> I'm so on the road. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, tell me about how Lucien feels at the moment. Uh, because... You are very normally very very good at dragon chess. Is it me? You rarely Is lose it them? <laughs> and you rarely lose it. And this time, these two times, sure you do lose, but to yourself, you surely did not win. I feel like I was back in my rookie years in the academy. I was so used to like playing against the other club members that I forgot some of the basics. Like, like oh, wondering, shit. were they actually shit, or was it? <laughs> did I not have good teachers? What was it? Like, is everything I knew a lie? Like, do I need to go back to the basics? <laughs> like, the... His whole adventure ends here as he tries to justify what happened. Chess, the thing that breaks us. <laughs> Is it the dystopian future and dark fantasy we're all living in? Is it the fact that cyberware is hugely hypocritical and rules most of what? No. It's the fact that my fucking bishop got taken by the stupid scout. That's what it's about. So, oh. you know, as you as you stare down the remaining chest board on the coffee table, a, a question in your life, in a way, you know, you see Charlie walking He's by. Just looking and then, down like you know, he carefully re like re puts everything back together oh no and you know puts like pats you on the back no i'm always up to go for a round with you if, if you oh. want but um i have the feeling that maybe it's not the most helpful thing right now unless otherwise he offers maybe tomorrow has, we'll, yeah. we'll... Maybe tomorrow we'll play. This is a bit too much excitement for me. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> and, you know, and, and then he, uh, like, you know, he nods and, like, as he, like, cleans up the last bit, it's like, have a good rest, boy. I'm, I know you can, you can do well too much. And as he says that, like, he goes back and probably leaves to to his own room, leaving you, Lucien, looking at the now very clean, uh, like very organized dragon chest on the on on the coffee table. I get up, and I'm going to bed. <laughs> Stay you go enough. back. Exactly, you go back, and then you just like you just lay there, like 
Dragon Chess has exactly. defeated us all. <laughs> exactly. So I two. won, and I still felt like I lost inside. <laughs> you won, but at what cost? Um, so the two of you fall asleep, and in the meantime, so what happened, Marlin, after you went back to town? I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I <laughs> what happened? I just don't want to bed. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what happened? Alright, so Marlin... Marlin went back to his quarters. <laughs> and as you do, when you just stay up sometimes, he does stay up. <laughs> He's going to practice dragon chess, but not against himself. No, 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 because you see... He has Ramus. <laughs> he has Ramus, his bird. All right, and so you roll an intelligence check. Hold on a again. minute. I have to check how much intelligence the bird has to see if this will be a real challenge. <laughs> or if he'll just be trying to make himself feel better. Give me a moment. All right, let's Please see what the steel defender's the intelligence wins. Oh, it's a four. Okay. Um... <laughs> Don't right, tell so me that the bro. bird's gonna win. If the bird wins, no. I'm oh, that would be the most to win. Win. I'm gonna That's flip the me. fucking table, actually, if the bird wins. Uh, alright. I saved the positions that Rachel and I were playing before. Uh, like, little piece of tape, but yeah, okay. Uh, so I do it. Do you want me to roll for the bird, too? Uh, no, I roll for the bird. Okay, what'd you get? I'm not telling you. Until I roll? <laughs> Yeah. Wait, or just not telling me, period. No, I'm not telling you, period. But you roll first. You it's roll. a minus three to that roll. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I know. It I rolled know. a fucking 19. I know it rolled a damn 19. And I rolled a fucking three. Oh, no. What did the bird roll? <laughs> what did the fucking bird bimbo roll? I have an eight total. I'm trying to justify this in my head. <laughs> Never a good thing to hear. <laughs> this game did not take an hour, by the way. <sighs> Maybe you have programmed your bird too well, is how I would say it. Maybe you have He's my instilled friend. way too many strategies in this bird. <laughs> He's and you're just not fucking star machine bird. So it and, makes sense. And you are just not, you know, you're just not on the in the mind. So I lose. <laughs> By how much I need to know. What did he roll base? He rolled a nat 20. Like <laughs> <laughs> we just like checkmates you in three moves. So this game ended in like five minutes or ten minutes, right? He goes, Ramus. I would say you learned a lot. You learned a lot from Ramus. I'm so damn proud of you. You're a smart old bird. You know that. You know that. And now Ramus go the like, fuck like, to bed. <laughs> <laughs> to bed. To bed with you for now, Ramus. Because right now, right now, Captain needs to practice his chess. And he puts him to his perch. And he says, "Good night. You're a wonderful. Can you do that hoo hoo again? Because that was beautiful." <laughs> Oh, you're a good bird. You're a good bird. He's going to practice against himself. Do I roll two intelligence checks? Uh, no, you just roll one, and then like this will uh, this will determine how well you learn. <laughs> it's even lower. It's a seven. What the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck? Is I going hate on? D, D Beyond. I will be rolling my own physical dice from this way forward. <laughs> Captain Marlin just has to uh, uh, just accept that chess isn't his game. No, he won't. He won't, though. That's the problem. You know, you, you try to you try to look back to your my bird. How oh, my bird just took me to fucking school. And I would say you you just don't quite understand how the strategy works against yours. All right. You know what? I'm and just... like you spend you spend a good hour on it, and you just you're just like you know I have the feeling that you should move the pawn before the bishop, and that's probably why I failed that last. So test. he's learning. He is learning. Can you please tell me? Can you please tell me how how long can I can I take? How long can I take before I don't get long rest? Uh, you can take two hours. 
and then uh, and then you two have to more least... or only one more. <laughs> only one more. Okay, he's gonna try one <laughs> last time to win against himself. I don't know how this fucking works, but I'm still gonna do it. That's a fourteen. That's slightly better. <laughs> This is proficiency <laughs> training right here, boys. <laughs> oh, I beat myself. Do All I because win? I decided, hey, let's play some chess. <laughs> he wakes up in the time. morning. Lushane, you're fired. Why? Just because you are fucking chess. <laughs> Go ahead. This time, I would say... You it's try not. to have a game with yourself, Lovely and shit. and you try to think, like, okay, so I this time my black me moves pawn, and white <laughs> me will me move the knight. Black and me then, moves pawn. Exactly, you know. And as things goes, you you slowly gain a better understanding. It's like maybe you know this is how it goes. This is a strategy. You don't have you have to think like a few steps ahead, okay. uh, not just a whole about defense. You have to like take offensive I'm too. So but you 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 it's like at this point your ha your head is pounding. But you did gain like a small tip. I am lightheaded. Uh, I will continue doing this until he gains proficiency training in dragon chess. I don't know how you rule those. I will keep doing this until it happens. I don't know why this is so important to him, but it is. Um, but he did better, and he's glad. He's going to pet Ramus one more time and just think about how smart of a bird he built. And then he is going to go to bed. He's going to go to bed, and he's going to look at the paintings and the walls that he put up. A various nice pictures of the stars as well as a few zoomed in planets and he's just going to try and remember a little bit about home and try not to remember the dragon chess is a thing that exists and now he's going to sleep it's the end of the day <sighs> anyway so it's been a tiring day for all of you especially i would say towards the <clears throat> uh which was unexpected <laughs> Um, it was this close to taking out his gun and just shooting the <laughs> table over and over <laughs> and just fuck you. Go ahead. Um, all of you rest <laughs> relatively well. Maybe dreamed of no. chess sets. No. Um, Please no. Especially you, Lu Shane. You definitely dream of your glorious days being almost the head of the club, club beating uh, anyone else. And you, and you still continue to win. But you know, like as you wake up, you're like, it's okay. Maybe today I will do better in chess. Um, and Gareth, you also had a, an all right night's sleep. Um, Maybe, you know, thinking about searching up some strategy books, how to train your dragon chess, uh, things like that. And Marlon, you are haunted by the dream of continuously once and once and once again beating, being beat by Ramus. And you wake up probably grumpy already. If Stephanie asks me one damn time why he immediately wanted to imprison me and didn't like or take well, I am going to point to this fucking moment. AJ, oh, my, my best friend, AJ, is sitting here. Look at his face. You know what that face is? That face is guilt. That is, that is friend's guilt right there. From looking at this, it's just like, I've caused my best bud from six, we know each other for six years, guys. That's a lot for my age. And he's sitting here and he's thinking, how did I make this happen? I just wanted to play chess. And with that, we conclude the private session. I love Ramus, by the way. He's a wonderful bird. I don't want to murder him because he beats me in chess. How... Did he roll a nat 20? I just howled. <laughs> I was so... Like, out of all, I was like, I was like, no, he wouldn't. And then he did. Oh, oh. I'm crying. <laughs> oh, all right.
right. Thank you guys so much for coming to this really cool <laughs> mini-sode uh, that we will never be doing in the future ever again. No, we will be. These are wonderful. It was a great time to flesh out. I had a roaring time. AJ and oh, I, how did you guys... Fucking amazing! <laughs> also, I'd like to point out we stream for four and a hours and fifteen minutes, four and a half hours, almost four and a half hours, two <laughs> days in game. That that right there, guys, is a sign of a very very serious talent on part of both Elle and us as well. So I'm very happy about that. It was fun as I hell. I'm so proud of the three of you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Yeah, you, you set that up, up so yeah. well. And also, I would just like to thank for a moment everyone who came by, all you guys who donated, thank you very much to Nick for the awesome raid. Thank you, Bioku, for all the bits, man. I really do appreciate the support. I will just say this right now. These mini minisodes are great. I'm not actually angry, <laughs> exasperated. I don't know what you're talking about. AJ's fucking crying, man. Uh, I've just been raided. <laughs> Again. <gasps> oh. Hello. Uh, you guys also just missed a really good Finchy character. Finchy Live, <laughs> how are you doing? Well, thank you, the Meowstuff, for the follow. Hello, Raiders. How are you doing? We were actually just about to end, but, you know, just for you, I will extend my normal 30-minute outro to an out. And I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Um, but I will say thank you guys so much for coming. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Sexiest Potato. Chelsea for the 100 bits. I really do appreciate it. Uh, this is a mini of a campaign that we will be continuing on, um, what was I going to say? Thank you. Hi, Saturday. Saturday. Yes. Thank you. Um, this is a thing we're going to be continuing. Hello. We just played a session of D&D &D as well. Oh, that's so cool. Fellow oh, d &Ders. Awesome. Okay, guys, please make sure to go over to Finchy. <laughs> fin fin Finch? Finchy. Finchy. Finchy? Am I Finchy? saying that right? Everybody go over to Finchy and follow. We got a, we got a mass follow this this wonderful person that just came in and raided who was also into D&D. Finchy, it's so good to see you. I would like to give anyone the opportunity who's come from Finchy to come by the Discord server. I'd love to talk about D&D to all of you. I blab a lot. It's wonderful to see all of you. Uh, sadly, we did just finish this session. It will continue on Saturday. I would hope that you could all come by because uh, we'd love to see you there. In terms of, that's the Discord link for you guys, if you would like to join. I know it's a little bit hidden there. I don't have bots set up. I'm a very caveman person that's streaming. When it comes to D&D, this is the main thing of what we do. I love it dearly. Eldora, wait. My wonderful, sweet Eldora has the one who ran this session today. She did a wonderful job. I run a session on Sundays and also in the future will be Wednesdays. This is a cyberpunk fantasy game. It's a very interesting setting and Ho totally homebrewed by Eldor, and it is amazing. On Wednesday, we run Sci-Fi Games Strictly, which is a Starfinder setting campaign, and Sundays are D&D 5e. Uh, what a new... And from now on, my campaign will become a Dragon Chance tournament. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and also I got my ass handed to me because apparently I built a bird, a mechanical construct bird as an artificer that is smarter than me at chess. <laughs> Oh, yes, so they funny. have a minus three to their intelligence. I have a um, plus four, and I rolled a three, and they rolled a natural 20. So I, I was thinking, like, the <laughs> worst, <laughs> most demoralizing Raiders, thing that could happen to Marlon is just... Raiders, <laughs> Raiders just know that bird. you have come at a wonderful time. Um, don't worry about AJ, this guy to my left right here. Uh, that, that guy to my left is... Um, uh, that's my that's my best bud right there. He's crying because he suggested chess. Hope you guys are having a wonderful night. We are actually going to keep the raid train going. We are actually going to raid the Fey Life, who is a really cool uh, guy who plays Don't Starve Together. Very fun time, actually, and very sweet. He has a pumpkin in the background. He's, he's pretty cool. And we're going to raid him now, most likely. Uh, I am sorry to do the carryover raid, but sure, why not? Let's keep it going. I want to spread the goodwill. And thank you very much, Finchy, for the raid. I'm going to be sure to go over and follow you. And yeah, I hope you guys do come by either Saturday, Sunday, and uh, can uh, be with us on the those D and D game. I can't speak D and D games. It's an awesome time. This session definitely proved it. If any of you have the patience or fortitude, I highly suggest you go back and you watch the last thirty minutes because. Mm, the vein popping out of my forehead is a good indicator that it went very well. <laughs> Oh, God. But yes, if you would like to come by and join the Discord server that we all operate out of, please do come by. We'd love to see any and all of you. 
Um, I I can't think right now. <laughs> it was so much, guys. It was so much. Anyway, point being, uh, we're gonna we're gonna raid we're gonna raid the Fela. No, I think I'm pretty sure. But thank you guys so much for coming. I, I really do appreciate all the support that you guys gave. Who did come? And thank you. We've had two raids this this session. This is amazing. By the way, this is meant to be a mini sode, a mini sode, guys, and it lasted for four and a half hours, and the ending was chess. Uh, I'm gonna. I love chess, guys. I actually do love chess. I'm trying to reconcile in my brain right now. I, I, I really am. I really am. We're raiding the Fae Life. I hope you guys will come by and join us. All of you who have come by, I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being here. And also, thank you so much, Finchy, again for the raid and all the support. You guys make this possible. Do what I love, and I really do appreciate it. Please come by the Discord channel. If it is to your liking, by all means. Um, love to see you guys in the next stream. I'll definitely come by yours, Finchy, and check out the DNZ stream. That's so cool. Thanks for coming by, everybody. We love you all. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good night. Goodbye. Don't, don't dream of chess. <laughs> Do not dream of chess. God darn it, man. It's just... Ooh. There we go, and we're ready. See you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, my God. Well. Well, well, well. <laughs>